Optimacro Detectors is the fastest growing manufacturer in the industry, and for good reason. Many detectorists, including Mike Hare, call us the most innovative, but we are so much more than that. We listen to and care about our customers. We also offer a wide range of detectors to fit all of your needs. Come check out all of our products today at www.noctadetectors.com. Detectors for everyone, everywhere, a lifetime. Welcome to the UK's Fast Metal Detection Podcast. It's All Metal Mode UK with your host from across the pond, Mr. Michael Hare. Hello, everybody. This is Mike here, and you're listening to the All Metal Mode Podcast UK. So before we get started, um, <clears throat> Mr. Sadler is not going to make it tonight. He had some things, uh, some really important things coming up that he had he had to take care of tonight. Um, we're hoping to have... Um, hold on a second here. Having to run into issues here. We've had all kinds of... Uh, pre-show issues hopefully we'll get work through them uh andy sampson will be joining us uh hopefully as our co-host tonight we're we're having some difficulties getting him right now so uh bear with us and hopefully we'll get everything straightened out and in order uh if you're new if you're new to the all metal mode podcast don't forget you can join us live in the chat and that's really simple to do whatever it, it does depend on what you're on, whether you're on a phone or um, a laptop or whatever. <clears throat> but when you click on the show, uh, a bar should come up with, uh, you know, pause button and all that. Look for a little chat bubble and you can join us live in chat. Uh, tonight we're going to have, uh, hopefully, <laughs> Dean Stanton on, Richard Link- Lincoln, and... Um, I think that's all. Uh, we were going to have Optimus Spades, Alan. Alan was having issues. He, he's not get, got his computer working yet. We're still He's still working on it. Um, the last I talked to him, and uh, hopefully we'll get him on. And, of course, Mr. Andy Sampson. Hopefully we can get him going on. Hopefully he'll be my co-host and tell us what he's been up to and all that. Um if you're interested in reading any reading any of my articles, you can go to allmetalmode.com. I have a new article about relic hunting with the 6MXI. Um, <clears throat> actually, a friend here in the United States uh, relic was relic hunting with it, and uh, I did kind of a review. It was kind of fun, a lot of fun, something I don't often do. Uh, also, check out archmdmag.com. And don't forget, um, <clears throat> find us on Facebook at All Metal Mode. All Metal Mode Podcast UK, uh, UK Metal Detecting, Metal Detecting UK Dirt Fishing, Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine, Archaeology and Metal Detecting Group. You can find us on Spreaker. You can listen live. You can download and listen listen to it on the go, the show on the go. iTunes, iHeartRadio, YouTube at All Metal Mode, and there's a lot of affiliates where I don't even know a lot of places to find us um please tell your your friends about the the show if you enjoy the show we'd really appreciate it um got luke in yeah i don't know what's going on guys we're having 
all kinds of issues. Uh, I think I've got Andy now. Let me see if I can get Andy in. Yeah, he's showing online. Hey, that's a plus. We'll get him in. I apologize if you can hear us ringing him in. Give me one second here. Oh, yeah. Hi, Andy. You made it. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Technology, <laughs> eh? <laughs> right. I was, I was just looking at all the problems that you've been having with Alan, and and it, and it just went wrong. <laughs> right. It happens. It, you know, every show, like if we got a show off without a hitch, it would be a miracle. It really would. Hey. I don't, it, it, there's always some kind of glitch going on. You know, it's right. Technology, technology, but hopefully it we'll is. get it worked out and everybody going. How you been? I'm good. How are you? I am real good. Uh, haven't talked to you in a while. No, no, oh, it's, been a it's, while. Uh, it's been a, yeah, it's been a couple of months, hasn't it? I think the last time I spoke to you was Christmas time when mm-hmm. we had the Christmas party. Right, right. That was fun. That was a fun one. Um, so what you been up to? Have you, uh, I, you know, there's something I got, I can't wait for the story, but I'd like to, have you been getting out much metal detecting? You found much lately? Well, yeah, we get out and about hopefully once a week. And, um, we've been out and about, uh, what was the last thing I found? I found my first Viking, a uh, first bit of Viking, um, metal work, which was well, well pleased with, um, nice. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, you know, it's not been it's been in the ground over a thousand years. Um and you get that feeling when you pull it out of the ground and you know, you think, What's that? It's just a just a little bit of little bit of grubby metal and then when you, you get some water on it and just rub it clear and it starts to show up what it is. Um it's actually a, a it's a piece of a bridal cheek bit bit. Um so obviously the uh the guys the straps on the uh, horse's head broke and it fell off into the dirt and then i picked it up yeah that's amazing incredible the history yeah. you guys have is just amazing to me just in- incredible someday someday need- andy i'm coming over okay. i'm telling you, you need to get out here, mike yeah i i want to unfortunately i got this baby that's you know takes that's up a lot of time no, you can't say unfortunately i've got a baby it's, it's oh i love it not- yeah, no, I love it. It just it just keeps me from uh, it keeps my metal detecting in general limited and stuff. But he's growing up. Before long, I'll I'll have him out there detecting. I'll have me a little digger here in a gear or two. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Stop. But unfortunately, I just can't travel. I couldn't make that right now. And Steph wouldn't let me leave the house for that long. No way. She, no. She's not. No, not not leave her alone with that little demon. No. That's our little demon, let me tell you. He's wild, Andy. So much fun, though. So Good. much fun. Good. Yeah. I haven't been out in a while. I've, it's <clears throat> really weird for Texas. We've had probably more rain in the last two months than the last three or four years. It's been – so it's like every chance, you know, Steph's off work, and I, I'm all excited to go out, and it's just pouring that day. And then I've been sick, so I'm really um, – getting getting a little bit uh frustrated here oh yeah Uh, Yeah. well don't worry about the rain there's no such thing as bad weather just bad clothing remember that (laughs) right oh that's funny (laughs) yeah yeah once the lightning's once the lightning's going though i'm i'm out you can count me out don't get out in the desert in the lightning that's 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 a good tip as well right right very good tip so (laughs) i i think to do to tell this story and we've been waiting on this forever. I don't know how we haven't got you on sooner. I, you know, Andy, I'll be real honest. These kids just keep me so busy that sometimes things slip my mind. But I can't wait to hear the story. But I think before you talk about that particular find, you got to back up and you got to retell the, the story. The original story. I think you do. And you know what? I've heard it. I want to hear it again. This. Such okay. a cool story. Yep. Okay. So obviously everybody's aware that there's a program called the Detectorists over here in the UK and it's over there as well, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's a big hit over here. Yeah, yeah. Well it's a big hit here. Um where we detect, um that's myself and Dick, we, we detect uh his name's Paul, but we call him Dick. Um <laughs> 
nothing, it's nothing rude about it. It's what he's whatever, whatever. What his granddad called it. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll go with that. Yeah. Hold on. We'll does, it, that. does it fit though? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we go. We where we detect. Um, is where they film the detectorists. We're lucky. The, the land that they film the detectorists on is where we detect now. Um, it was two years ago now. We we, we, we were out um, one evening in the summer. We knew that they were going to be filming again. We didn't know when, but we hadn't seen anybody where we go. And there was a freshly ploughed bit of land, and we went on there just one evening after work. And um, Dick... Uh, was digging and, and at the other end of the field I heard him give up a, a, a big old s- scream and he came running across the field towards me and jumping up and down and shouting Roman gold you know Roman gold and and I was we were uh, I ran over and we were looking and we started to detect over where he'd found it and I'm sure enough we were pulling out coin after coin Roman gold um, now a lot of people have said to us well you know you must have known that uh, they that it weren't they weren't real, but we didn't. We'd only been detecting a few months, so it was the, it, you know our eyes just overtook the whole mm-hmm. the whole situation. Um, and we were pulling um, we were pulling pottery out with it, and everything that you'd think would be there with a hoard. And we ended up with fifty four Roman gold coins. Um, one particular coin was a. Um, uh, Emperor Nero, and <laughs> it was worth. We looked it up, and it was lo- it was worth twenty six and a half thousand pounds, something like that. We had six of these coins, um, so as you can imagine, we were you know we were sort of couldn't believe our luck. We paid off our mortgages. We were going on holiday. We'd bought big cars and bikes and all the toys. We you know, and then it trans. I spoke to a neighbour of mine who's part of an archaeological team and I took I took them all over to him and poured them onto his kitchen table and he looked at them and he just he 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 just looked at them and said blimey where'd you find these and um we told him and he picked them up and the minute he picked them up he said these aren't real and I just thought nah you don't know what you're talking about and and he said no these aren't these are not real now as I say, as I said before, my wife works on the farm, and um, I said to her, you know, that uh, this friend of ours across the road had said they they weren't real, um, and she said, well, she said, oh, she said that they are filming over there at the moment, and I said, oh, are they? You know, um, so the following day, she spoke to the the directors. Uh, or the director of the program and asked him if they'd put any coins down. And he said, no, we wouldn't do that. That's not what we do. Um, and she said, oh, only my husband and his friend have found this, um, found some coins and it's on a freshly ploughed bit of land. And he then said, hang on a minute, freshly ploughed. And she said, yeah. And he said, ah, he said, we've, we've put some coins down to do, a, uh, to do a, some filming. So showing a plough, going through the dirt and lifting the coins up. He said, I wonder if that's the same bit. Anyway, she told him where it was. And sure enough, we dug up the, the film props. Oh, yeah, which, yeah. Yeah, which, you know, our hearts sank and it was all very, everyone thought it was highly amusing. We were crying into our soup. Um, yeah. it, it just, you know, it wasn't, it, it wasn't much fun. So that's that's the story there. And as I say, a lot of people have said, oh, well, you must have realised they weren't. But we didn't. We did not have a clue. We were just, we were so blinded by what we were pulling out of the ground. It was it was just incredible, you know. Um, right. And, the, and as I say, the neighbour, as soon as he picked them up, he said, no, it's not, they're not real. They're, they're not real. It's the weight of them. You can feel the weight. And we haven't handled gold coins or anything like that. So we, we just did not know. Um, so I... Basically, that was a couple of years ago. Um, I then I wrote an article for uh, Julian, and he put it in the magazine. And from that, it went viral, and every national newspaper here took the story on. Um, and we had, you know, daytime TV phone us up and all sorts of. So we had our we had our little bit of fame, if you like. Um, 
just from from those coins and you know it's a good story it, it's funny now it now it's funny right it now time, no i yeah. bet not <laughs> i bet not and i know you got a good ribbon good rib, ribbon we from it we still yeah. do we still do our, our detecting club you know uh, people are come up and still ask us if, you know if you found anything real lately yeah uh, <laughs> you know but hey if, it, if if the boot was on the other foot, it would be exactly the same. I'd be doing the same thing. Right. So. Absolutely. So that leads us to the next part of the story. Well, the next. Uh, well, there is a there is a bit in the middle of the story because I actually found, um, if for those people that are listening that have seen the, the program, um, the last shots on the last series are of coins falling out of a tree, and I've actually found that tree. And sure enough, there's loads of coins underneath the tree as well, which they've just left. And I, 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 you know, so where we had 56 gold coins, we're probably up to about over 100 (laughs) of these fake gold coins now. Oh, that's so cool. Good fun. So, but we we know what they are, and um, we did. We we, you know we we got a bit. I got a bit fed up with digging them up. To be honest with you. I did recently go over there with a friend of mine who's very new to detecting, and um, I said to him, try, try around this tree here. So he was digging them up, and his face was exactly the same as our face. <laughs> when he, found, he found about five of them. So um, he was he was well chuffed with them but until I told him they weren't real. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but then coming on to the ne- another part of the story, so – we're, we're fortunate where we detect um, is it's a lot of land, loads of history on it, a lot of history on it. And um, we've got fields where we pull out um, medieval stuff. We've got fields where we pull out um, Second World War stuff, um, you know. Um, and we've got a particular field where we started pulling out um, Roman, little tiny Roman coins. Not many, but, you know quite a few a few of them you know little roman bronze coins that are all rotting away and all this sort of thing um found some bits of roman brooch then we found some bits of saxon brooch um and dick was digging about and he found a uh, what's called a girdle hanger which we didn't know what it was it's a little piece of metal it looks like a bit like a key and apparently it's uh, when we've shown it to the archaeologist and our, our flow, the finds liaison officer, um, they've told us that it, it's it was something that was symbolic that was buried with Saxon women. They would wear it like the, the lady of the house or, the oh, you know, wow. looks after the house. It would have been buried with her on her belt um, as a as a, uh, a sim- as a symbol that it's like the keys to the house, if you like, okay. um, which got us a little bit enthused because they were sort of hinting that it could be a saxon cemetery um and we were finding the stuff in different areas of the field um four different areas and then we were out one uh one uh, um sunday and sure enough i dug a hole and at the bottom of the hole was a real roman gold coin wow the roman thing. too yeah, yeah, it was Valentinius the Third, which nobody's ever heard of. Um, it turns out he was probably the last emperor of the Roman Empire. Uh, I think he's he's the bloke who actually lost the Roman Empire. Wow! So, um, but the coin, yeah, it's a it's a lovely coin, um, solid gold, Rome mint. So it was minted in Rome. Um, finds its way all the way to Suffolk in England, into the middle of a field. Um, and yes, it is a lot heavier than the fake. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and we've, we've shown it, it's been recorded. And at the moment we've got the, um, the British museum interested in buying it because they've said it's quite a rare coin. So, um, we're in discussion with him at the moment about it, but it's all down to the landowner whether he he wants to let it go or yeah, not. That's uh, you know couldn't help uh, couldn't happen to a better guy, Andy. That's that's great. Hey. Hard to make fun of you now, isn't it? 
<laughs> well, I've only got another 56 to find, haven't I, really? Yeah. <laughs> 55, and then we'll be even. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, then, then then you'll be good. Then they'll stop teasing you, I guess. They, 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 yeah, they can stop teasing me, yeah. That's uh, too I, funny. I, it's, it's good, but no, it is great. And, and when you find something like that, when you see it at the bottom of the hole, and obviously gold comes out the ground the same way as it goes in the ground, right. um, it's it, uh, it comes out the same, you know, the same colour, just a bit dirty. Um, no, it really is, really is nice. Uh, and if if you like, I'll put a picture of it on your page so that everyone can see um, on the uh, All Metal Mode page. So I would love that. I would love to see it. I yeah. think I've seen it before. It's been a while, though. I'd love to see it. Oh, you, you, I mean, how could you get tired of looking at that, you know? I know. All right. It's, it's, it's a, but saying that, though, Mike, I mean, um, you know, there are a lot of things being found at the moment. It's, it's this year. It, it just seems like there's more and more, um, more and more stuff being found in this country. Um, you know, uh, it's just so busy. Every time you, you, you know, you're going through the Facebook pages and that, um, there was an article, I think today, uh, you've spoken to Digger Dawn, haven't you before on, yep. on the show? Yes, yeah. Sir. Um, she put something on her page today about a coin, a Roman gold coin again, uh, which was found that went to auction. Um, it was a very, very rare coin. It was supposed to get something like, I think, 70 to 100,000. It went for 400,000 pounds. It's ridiculous. Oh, my really. goodness. Wow. wow. Now, do you do we know who found that? Um, I don't know. Um I can I can have a look for you. I <coughs> find it. I don't know who found it, but um, incredible though. No matter who. Yeah, I know. So that, it's on her her page. She's put an art, the article on there. I gotcha. um, Yeah, but it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. But look at the guys. Um, you know, Scotty B. Um, I think he's in Spain at the moment, isn't he? I don't know if he's listening, but um, I mean, his guys they found that that hold at the detectable. Um, oh, was Scotty B part of that? I believe so. Yeah. Oh, was he? I didn't know that. I I know. I believe well, he, he kept sticking his head up in the in the photos. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was some guys from his uh, from his club. I'm I'm not hundred oh, percent sure. But that is cool. That, yeah, and there is just just some amazing uh, amazing history coming out of the ground at the moment. Yeah, there is absolutely. Hey, I, for, I forget now. What detector are you using? Uh, I've got an Equinox. I thought so. I, that's what I thought. How are you liking it? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Really, uh, you know, really enjoying it. And um, I tried my hand at a bit of uh, detecting in the water the other day. Uh, my, da- my daughter, she lives in Wales. And um, for, uh, she lives on a farm in wales and really lucky the area that that she lives in uh, there are masses of of roman bits and pieces oh, and yeah. we went we went visit to visit her a couple of weeks back and um i just i, I just did a little bit of um you know looking at looking into where she lives and at the field that's directly opposite where she like her house where she lives which is all part of the farm that she's on um, the field goes down. There's a there's a, a stream at the bottom of the field, and on the old maps, which you know, when when we sort of do a bit of research into it, the old maps, the village Ford was actually at the bottom of her field. So um, yeah, bought myself some waders and went down there and had a little bit of a go in the water. How'd you do? Didn't find a thing. Didn't find a thing, <laughs> but it was fun. I yeah. bet. I had this, I had this uh, idea that the the people, the people that would have been using it, would have been falling over and dropping stuff, and the only person that fell over in it was me. <laughs> well, you have those days. We all have them. It happens. Yeah, it happens. But uh, but it was good. But um, that, that's that's a that's a good thing because she lives up there, and we whenever we go there, we're I'm able to go on the farm. Um, yeah, just waiting to find some really good stuff because there's iron age stuff there's also a big roman fort nearby roman roads everywhere it's, it's, and it's it's very much out in the sticks so it's it's like out in the countryside 
Um, but so there's a lot of there's a lot of history there. So, That's amazing. But I, yeah, yeah. So I'm lucky, lucky I've got that, and I'm lucky I've got where I detect um, at the moment. You know. So yeah, absolutely. I you know I I was recently talking to somebody that uh, he's got a uh, a new newer hunting partner. It's been doing it for thirty plus years. And he said he's been over to England a few times, I guess actually several times. And he, he told my friend, he said, uh, you know, it's really hard to enjoy metal detecting here in the States now after being over in England. He said the history is just so much different. He said, you know, I've been over so many times that, you know, unless it's, you know, close to a thousand years old, I don't even get so excited anymore. And he said, they're just talking about how rich the history was over there. And it's just amazing to me. That's why I love doing this show, Andy. I mean, to hear what you guys find is just incredible. I mean, just incredible to me. Are you ready to bring on Dean and uh, see what he's been up to? Yeah, let's bring on Dean. Let's yeah, I'll, I'll see. He's, uh, he's chatting away on here. So. Dean, you with line. us? I am. Can you hear me? You sure can. How you been? Um, I'm good, good. How are you? I'm great. Feeling better now? Nah, I'm getting there. I still got, I keep having to mute and cough and stuff. These these kids, <laughs> I think, keeping keeping us going with it. But now nah, I'm feeling better. I'm getting better. I see you. you trimmed your beard as well. Yeah, I cut my beard off. It was... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, my... Uh, Steph, my wife, is not real happy about it. She liked the beard, um, but uh, the kids were okay. Points. I I thought it might scare the kids, and neither one of them cared, so that was good. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all completely gone. Well, I just have a goatee now. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, you're going to trim yep. it down. Oh, that's yep. good. It's good for it's, yeah, it's a good summer cut. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Because <laughs> it is getting hot here in Texas, let me tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, it's getting hot in Somerset as well, obviously. Is it? What what <laughs> what kind of temperatures do you guys have? Oh, you know, fifteen degrees centigrade. <laughs> what's really... what's that in Fahrenheit? Do you know? Oh, I, oh god, <laughs> I no know. clue. Good th- thirty. It's quite warm. It's quite warm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. It's not. It's nice. Comfortable. It's, it's not Texas hot. <laughs> yeah, we've been we've been around ninety degrees Ew. here Fahrenheit, of course, but uh, yeah. and it'll it'll be getting to a hundred here real soon. So you've been out detecting much, Dean? Yeah, a couple of times. I had a bit of a break while um, I did the, the giveaway and uh, with the nasty weather, um, and then and just you know other things, as you know, family comes first, etc. So there's all sorts going on there, but. Uh, Obviously, I've been out twice this week uh, for just short hunts, but the, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say that the uh, the ground is absolutely rock solid yeah. at the minute over here. It's, I mean, it's, we had a little ra- a bit of rain last night, so it's softened up in places. Um, yeah, but it's it's just every heavy everybody's been commenting on how, uh, how solid the ground is. Yeah, it gets like that here in Texas so bad it's like concrete. Yeah. It's like concrete. It gets hard to get through. Luckily, we've had, in the last few months, we've had more rain than we have the last few years. So that's not been an mm. issue here. It's just been raining so much, it's hard to get out. Yeah. Oh, I was just uh, just just doing the Celsius to Fahrenheit thing. And uh, average 15 to 20 is about <laughs> 60 to 70. Fahrenheit. About 60. So, and you're, and you're 60 saying it's hot? Yeah, that's oh, that's lovely. That's beautiful weather. <laughs> that's beautiful weather. I'm sure Andy'll agree. <laughs> that's our winter weather here in in Texas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no kidding. It's our that's our uh, winter weather. Mm-hmm. It'll get colder than that at times, but I would say our average is somewhere around in there, probably sixty. Yeah, well, it's, it's nice, but it, yeah, I mean, you know, this time of year, um, everybody moans about that the hard ground and that uh but i i, I saw um a comic chef neil neil oh i've got his second name neil down in australia he uh he just goes out with his detector on a, on a pick because that, that's their <laughs> ground is it is like 
absolutely. What, yeah. what with all the global warming, we might have to do that soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I might get myself on an order. Yeah, it's, it's not. But as you know, as you as you know, a little bit of rain and things change. Yeah, changes yeah, real and it, quick. It makes such a difference. I mean, the, the last couple of months I've done, obviously, you know this. You get these odd signals, and you know you get hardly anything, and then a, be- a massive ringing, got to be a coin signal, and uh, you think that's a little bit too loud, and it is the compulsory iron ring, boom, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any yeah. real good finds that stand out lately? Well, uh, not, not not standouts recently. I mean, um, I had a, a, a really nice condition. Um, Victoria Halfpenny from 1864 today. Well, you know, I do um, on my Facebook group, I have a coin competition. Yes. Uh, and I haven't been able to upload a coin and get points for a, a while now. Um, uh-huh. uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of like monthly. So every month there's a there's a monthly king or queen, coin king or queen. And then there's a, sort of the, uh, I think in November, stroke December, I'll have a, a, you know, a 2019 coin king or queen. And they... They're going to get a, a Garrett hat and stuff, well, you know that type of thing. But it's, it's just a bit of fun. It's, it's somewhere there that you know can you can uh, restore the pictures of your, uh-huh. your nice coins. Very pre decimal though. And somebody suggested because um, uh, it's only for UK. Because uh, obviously, um, if I were to bring bring you guys in, then uh, you'd, you'd flood us with pennies, etc. Right. <laughs> yeah, but they said, well, make it pre seventy one then. Well, it's still the same thing. I don't know. It's it's I mean it's only a bit of fun, so I might do that actually. That's great. That's great. <laughs> um, have you guys, I'm sure you guys have heard that uh, Julian Ever, Evan Hart's out of uh, ICU and stuff. Oh, yeah, I was going to mention that. Yeah, yeah, is that amazing? Yeah. yeah, I'm glad to hear I he's think, doing good. Yeah, I think he's coming home today. Uh, uh, something oh, he's there. coming he's, home? Yeah, I think so. His wife said she was looking forward to having him home. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I just, just might be getting a bit excited, yeah. Yeah, I just read, like, in the last few days, I thought that he was coming out of ICU, which is huge. Mm. So, mm. coming home soon. Wow, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean, I'll have a... Oh, I can't find it. I sleep. Oh, okay. Just clicked onto Facebook and got all sorts of things. When he's some up. Guy called, <laughs> some guy called Mike sending me messages. Who is he? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> When he's uh, up for it, I hope I can get him back on the show. I, I, yeah, I'll tell you yeah. what, that guy is amazing. Uh, yeah. Just uh, what a great, great person to represent the hobby. Get it, get him on, yeah, on for the uh, the recovery session. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. But it's, you know, Have you had him on the show, Mike? Yeah, we had him on. We mm. sure did. He was also, mm. um, I don't know if I, if you guys have heard the story, but... When we did the detective all last year, that was, you know, kind of, I didn't know how that was going to go. I thought Dave and Luke were just going to talk to me. Well, Dave ended up passing me around to everybody. And, you know, being here in the United States, I knew quite a few of, of who, who I was talking to, you know, from YouTube and stuff. And, um, but all of a sudden, uh, he, uh, Dave said, now, now you're going to talk to uh, Julian Evanhart. And honestly, guys, I know this is horrible. You know, being here in the United States, I'd never heard of him. And right. we had a conversation about, excuse me, hold on, <coughs> a shell casing and how, what it was is talking about context, how something that's as simple as a, a shell casing, how how historically important that can be oh, yeah. and it was yeah, yeah. and and he explained I, I forget the story now i think it was a it was to shoot down a zeppelin or a german zeppelin or something mm. i believe don't hold me to that and i i was just in wow and i after we did that show i told luke and dave i said i have to we have to get him on the show Mm. And, uh, yeah, we had him on and he was a lot of fun. He's just a wealth of information and, uh, just a wonderful guy. You know, we need people like that. He's one of those guys who can, uh, can, as you say, retain information. I mean, mm. I, I found a little, an odd, it's like a really short, um, like a nine mil casing on, mm. well, on the last. And I thought, well, that's just a short nine mil casing. And it turns out to be a, um, a point four ten or a four ten, I think they call it. 
um, yeah, like like a round for um, what they call a garden gun, which I've never heard of. It's a smooth uh, four, it's four ten smooth bore shotgun. Yeah, uh, yeah, you poachers should, gun. I, yeah. There you go. Yeah, poachers gun. I'd never heard of one before. So it's little things like that. But I, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll forget that. I'll find another one and I'll go. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> but some people can retain that type of information, can't they? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. Uh, you mentioned four ten. It's a really small shotgun round. That's that's what mm. I learned to to hunt with as a little kid. I mean, that gun all was right. as big as me back then. So, mm. yeah, we all we all learned how to. That, that's a very mm. popular for small kids uh, here. Yeah. In well, States. it's the same. Is it the same um, caliber of, uh, as uh, the Derringer? You know, the little the little classic. Uh, they they ladies. do make Derringers yeah. that that shoot the four ten round. 4-10. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I thought that's what I thought it was, but I'd put both in the video anyway. <laughs> yeah, very. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they're pretty rare now. I mean, when I was a kid, it seemed like all of us, you know, country kids had four tens and would hunt with four tens. I haven't seen a four ten around for a long time, though. They're they're, they're quite an old gun here. I mean, they, 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 my great great grandfather had one, and they basically fold in half. Yeah. Um, well, they call them a poacher's gun because they put them inside their coat in the pocket. Ah, I see. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Uh, yeah, so I think my dad's got it at the moment. <laughs> I'll, probably, <laughs> I'll probably inherit that at some stage. Yeah, that's I'll a good one. Classic. Or modifier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> you, you can still buy the ammunition, I know, it's on, online. Oh, are don't tell co- me that. Are you guys yeah. allowed to have those or? Under license, I think. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah. Richard Lincoln started with a four with a four ten. He says. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, so I'm not sure about the four ten under license. Depends on the license. Uh, shotgun license. Um, I don't know really. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> yeah it'll be a licensed gun, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I no. was I was doing a bit of research on um, forty millimeter um, grenades the other day. Somebody I somebody I watched I watched his video over an island and he found it on the beach huh. and uh, he, he, so I says it's a training one but yeah best still pop it to the garda uh, uh, yeah. So he's, <laughs> yeah it's all crusty in that but it's amazing what you find in that respect yeah absolutely that's amazing mm. yeah but um I don't know I I uh I hope he he's gets home and feeling good and I, I'm sure he's been through a lot I you know <sighs> Mm. You, you you don't need anybody to tell you as long as he was in ICU it was really serious. Oh yeah, it, it, it would you have know. been touching. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, you don't yeah. go into ICU for fun. Yeah, mm. I mean, somebody will have a long recovery period. Yeah, somebody was looking after him. Thank goodness. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, but, mm. uh, yeah. We've had him on. He's he's just great guy. I you know we like I said we need more people like him representing mm. the hobby. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron said, I talked about my coin competition. Aaron says, I'm winning so far. Yeah, Maybe I see. <laughs> if, if Aaron checks, he'll find that Lee's winning so far. You're oh. second place, Aaron. Oh. Ooh. Unless you haven't loaded some coins. He's, yes, I'm way down. <laughs> <laughs> he's always oh, winning the overall so far. I think that's what he means. <laughs> he is by, by, by a long shot, actually. Sorry, Aaron, I forgot about that. <laughs> um. Wait, which post that? Real quick, mm. Dean, tell everybody what yeah. your what your uh, YouTube uh, channel is. Oh yeah, um, my YouTube channel is Shilling King Metal Detecting UK. <coughs> Excuse me, um, and I've got a Facebook page of the same name, so um, everybody's welcome on there. It's uh, I've I got it a closed group, I think, but it's you know it's there's only I think just under four hundred people in there, so it's it's reasonably select and it's it's quite good. You know, I'm happy for people to share anything on their videos, finds Friday. Um, you know, adverts. There is um, somebody shared something on there. Uh, Rob Robert. Oh, I forgot his name now. Actually, it's like a he has a web page, and uh, you can sort of register your YouTube page, and he has a list. Robert Shetland. It's called. Um, hold on. Uh-huh. Oh, oops, sorry, I've just opened a video. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> Andy, Andy, do you have a do you have a YouTube channel? Well, we have, but it's just a bit of fun. It's um, Saxon Hunters, we've called it, and uh, it's just it's just a bit of fun. Just something that we, you know, 
We're not doing it in a professional way. Let's put it that oh, way. Oh, blimey. I'm with you there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the last thing. I'm, I'm sure yours are more special than, professional than, that, than anything that we've done. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, we I found... There you go. There you are. Saxon Hunters. It's got uh, the... Oh, what's that helmet called? The what? The, what's the, the... Your icon, the picture of the helmet. Oh. It's quite, it's quite a famous one, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's not far from where we are. Um, ah. yeah, so, I mean, I'm, that's what I was saying earlier, is that the, the history around here is... Uh, well, I'm, a, I'm probably about... Oh, three miles from Sutton Hoo. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, which is well, great. And, yeah. yeah. It's, it's good, you, but it's not really. It depends on where you can find to, to get out, isn't it? Um, really? I'm it fo- is. It is. Yeah. I'm following you now, and I'm going to get alerts, so you better get posting more videos, Andy. Yeah, I'll just have to take the bell. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, no, no pressure, but I'm waiting on a new <laughs> no video. Pressure. Okay, we'll, just have, <laughs> we'll have a bit of fun. Um, yeah, uh, you're, if you look on there, you'll see me wading in the water, which is one of the ones that I did a little while ago, the other week. Yeah, I've seen. Water, yeah, water. Oh, I'm onto that. On yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, when I don't find anything. Uh, we very rarely, rarely do. <laughs> Yeah. So, what sort of area do you? Where, what, what sort of area are you in then, Dean? I, I'm down Somerset, so I'm um, um, the Yo- Yeovil area, north of Yeovil. Uh, oh right. Um, yeah. So I'm um, most. If you see most of my videos, I've uh, I've aircraft noise about because I'm quite close to um, a certain airfield in this area, right. which, which I wouldn't mention. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's you know it's uh, it's not it's not bad not bad. Uh, Oops, let me explain. Oh, I'm just sorry. I was, I just closed your page. <laughs> it happens. What? Yeah. Anything else new? Hmm? Um, no, not really. I've got, I got the Garrett back. Uh, you, you know, I had trouble with the, um, with the AT Max uh, false oh, that's and, right. That's and right. Rather, yeah, and and then the, then the headphones went half volume and wouldn't connect and would connect. So I sent them off to sent everything off to Regton. They sent it all back yeah. within two days. Um, really quick turnaround, and everything is fine. All it needs, oh. all, 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 all we need now is for me to be able to find stuff. Which, yeah, but I, I mean, you know, I'm the 18 months long, so I'm still, I'm still learning the sounds, etc. Et um, I have a few nice things, but. Uh, what, what did you have before the 18 max? I have the Ace 250 with. Um, with the uh, Mars 13 and a half uh, double depth, which uh, was, yeah. re- it was it really the, uh, improved machine. I had the 400 and, and Dick mm. had the, the 300. And they, yeah, we found lots lots of good stuff with those. It's amazing, yeah. And that, as, as in, you know, and as you've probably seen, it's, 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 uh, it's part look in it. Part look. It's not all about the machine, you know. Um, the right. machines do great things, but the. Um, sorry. One second. He sounds like a busy man, doesn't he, Andy? Yeah, he's doing the washing up. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Sorry. I was just closing the front door. You don't want to hear the telly, do you? <laughs> he, must ha- yeah. he must have a wife like mine that makes me work work, work my butt yeah. off. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> I've got a little, little bowl patch on the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, no, yeah, yeah, it's, I'm only joking. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Whoa. Sure. Yeah, with the, um, with the machine thing, as you know, everybody knows, you've got to swing on it to find it, and, and, um. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, you know, oh, I was going to say, Chris, um, Addicted to Bleeps has been playing with, uh, really old machines, and this, he's still finding stuff with its machines, you know, from back in the 80s. The people that are yeah. still using these machines, yeah, it's, you know. It's, uh, it's for, for me. It's all about getting out, having fun, a bit of fresh air, mental reset, and sometimes meeting up with like-minded folk. Uh, oh, Aaron, hey, you're getting a few subs there, Andy. Am I? Yeah, that's, that's Aaron. Yep. So, now you got it. Now you got to get busy on them videos. We're all yeah. we're all subbing you. Um, okay. You're talking about Chris <clears throat> working with those old detectors tonight on. Uh, uh, I don't. He's in here in the United States. Andy O'Neill does a show on uh, YouTube 
every Thursday night, and uh, I'm I'm tonight's guest, and we're one of the one of the conversations is going to be analog versus digital technology. So, um, yeah, I'm a big I've, fan. Uh, I'm I've a big heard fan. you uh, discuss this previously. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> are, are you know? I think you guys in the UK over in England are so much nicer because. I get on my rants about a certain detector or mm-hmm. a certain thing, and I'll get emails, I'll get phone calls like, Mike, I'm, you're, I'm tired of hearing about the Rudis, or I'm tired of hearing about the Amphibio, or, <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. you, 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 all you've been talking about lately. So I get on my little rants, <laughs> but nobody for, over in England well, ever gives me a hard time. You guys are so well, nice because, to me. You, know, you, like, you use what you like, and you like what you use, don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah, is, I, I yeah. agree with that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I agree with that. I mean, we, as I say, we had the, when we, we started out, um, I had an old, from years ago, I bought, um, uh, when I, this is years and years ago, I bought um, an old, I uh, uh, can't remember even what it's called, Tesoro, <laughs> uh, laser, laser B3. Um, yeah. And that was all, that was, that was good, but I, I'd never really got, into it into metal detecting i'd had a you know i had the odd little go but i never found anything i think the most i found was a musket ball with it which mm. i was i was stoked about that but then when I when that. i started working uh, where i am now with dick and we were chatting one day and we decided well let's have let's have a go and because my wife works on a farm and we we're able to go on the land there you know it was it was well we'll get a decent one and we both went for what we could afford um, at the time, and I, I got, the, as I say, I got the Gower at four hundred, and um, and Dick got the three hundred, and I think we spent about a year and a half, two years using those, um, and then we were we were we were lucky. We found a coin uh, which the landowner said, "Well, we'll you know let's auction it," and it was a very rare Roman coin, um, mm. had three three heads, three emperors' heads on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that by selling that, and we obviously split the proceeds with the with the landowner, etc. And yeah. we ended up with um, uh, uh, the equinox. So, we, mm. but when we actually found it, it was like we were tossing up. What should we get? Should we? Because we've got the garrets. We we knew where we were. You know what we were doing with that. But then yeah. the equinox started to come up in in, uh, and we thought, well, well, let's you know, let's just bite the bullet and go for one of those each, mm. um, which we did, and. Um, yeah, I mean, it, the, the the Garrets are, a, 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 I think, a brilliant little machine to start off with mm. um, because, you, you know, you can get your ear on, in with them quite quickly, yeah. can't you? Yeah, exactly. They're great. They're great starter machines. Absolutely great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the Equinox is a completely different, mon- you know, a completely different, different uh animal you know but yeah. you you find you're trying to multitask on a, on a on the detector and for the first few months i've got to be honest i just couldn't i wasn't getting on with it um mm. but then it suddenly clicked you know when you go out one day and, and you know i spent a long time just listening and and it suddenly began to click and um yeah we, we're sort of I'm, I'm i'm really pleased with it to be honest with you they're, they're I, brilliant machines I really hate the drama on social media about, you know, this detector's bad, that one's, you know, I, yeah. I, there's not a detector on the market right now. The new, you know, the newer stuff um, that, that I think's a bad detector. They all have their, there's no yeah. perfect detector. Yeah. They all work, yeah. you know, good in some way, or, you know, they may, might excel in certain areas. Um, yeah. uh, they're just, I mean, so when we see this bickering and, and all that, I, I really get tired of that. And, uh, you know, use what you can afford, research what you think will work best for you and go have fun. And it shouldn't matter what, who uses what or, or any of that stuff. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. It says, yeah, there's, there should be no, like all hobbies, there's always an element of snobbery. And, you know, some people are, uh, my car's better than yours, my house is better than yours, you know. They say, I've got more money than you, type thing. And I, yeah. yeah, I can't believe with people like that. I just I just think, you know, enjoy, have fun. Yeah, Did you exactly. know, have you read, have you read Aaron's comment? He's found, he's, he's managed to land a permission to dig the grounds 
of a mansion once owned by Led Zeppelin. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. I'm, is I'm not cool. envious. I'm not envious, Aaron. You think, yeah. you think you'll find some heavy metal? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I'll be here all week." That's funny. But yeah, there's some really good detectors. I think all the manufacturers. You know, every manufacturer has at least one or a couple that are really good. You know, I mean, they're all they're all good. It's just use use what works best for you. We all have our favorites and stuff, but that doesn't mean my favorite's better than your your detector. You know, it's. Uh, it gets aggravating at times to see some of that. <clears throat> it, oh, it does. Well, Dawn, um, dig a Dawn, Dawn Chip Chase, Chip Chase sorry, put a, a comment on uh, her, her channel or her Facebook group to say, look, you know, I'm absolutely tired of uh, this uh, nonsense of, you know, the metal that's in snobbery, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And the, there's, oh, it's full of comments of, of, of um, 100% people agreeing and saying, yeah, we're sick of it. You know, so it's, it's maybe it's one in a million Oh, well, one in hundreds, not I, yeah. It's a, oh, mate, he said it's the only permission I've got, which I had a farm to do. <laughs> oh, I, man, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've left groups before, you know, particular mm. groups that, you know, uh, I'm not going to name the manufacturers, but a manufacturer group. Now, I'm not saying that the manufacturer did it, but, you know, you know how people will start a group on, mine lab and the, you know the ctx and then the, the 800 yes. and there's white mm-hmm. has their all of them have somebody started a group and, and i've been in groups before and and you know i remember last year a detector was announced by another manufacturer and people in that group were going crazy absolutely rude over mm-hmm. that new yeah. detector and i i just left yeah. i'm like i'm not gonna you know mm-hmm. how how childish and uh, well, that was that was it. That, that was Dawn's point. She was uh, yeah. highlighting the fact that um, the new, oh god, is it the new Mine Lab? No, the new yeah, uh, the new Mine this, Lab. Yeah, this, but... yeah, there's something coming out, and they'd actually, <laughs> they, they've actually in their advertising have, have, have bounced it off. Garrett, well, you know, hold, so. hold on, hold on <laughs> one second. I've seen that hmm. video twice. Hmm. I need somebody to explain to me how Mine Lab was poking at Garrett. I didn't catch it. I don't understand. The hat didn't look anything like Garrett stuff. The detector, I, I, I'm I'm confused at why people, I'm not saying they're not, but mm. I'm confused of why so many people are saying that, that they were poking at Garrett. Oh, Dad. I have no idea. I didn't even watch the Okay, video you I haven't seen it. I didn't it. comment. No, no, no. Okay. I, don't, I don't even get into it. Yeah, I don't I get into it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand because I watched it and I just don't see it. I, but several people have said stuff. To, you know, I've heard. Uh, you know, in social media, I've had some people reach out to me, and you know, I, I don't mean to to be rude at all. I just don't see it. I, I you know, what oh, do no, you no, mean? No, no. You know, so I, I hope that isn't what they were doing. Um, but oh, I, yeah, and it probably wasn't. But you know, again, there's there's another element who. Uh, who, who can be particularly, I don't know, sensitive, shall we say? Yeah, yeah, I think... Yeah, so that, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm sometimes... Just, I think, to be fair, in any sort of hobby or anything like that, you always have that sort of element, don't you? Um, mm. I mean, I've, I've uh, you know, I've been into motorcycles and that, and you get people like, you know... That, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. That, Know, do it, and you just think, well, no, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it for me. No, yeah, exactly. And when we, you know, we go out. We we go out detecting. I I go detecting because I just love being outside and enjoy, and I enjoy, you know, finding this sort of thing. Agreed. And Agreed. I'll go. Yeah. I'll go to um, our club meets, and there will be guys that are sitting there, and they're like, you know, they're act, they're professional metal detectorists, and. <laughs> That's their entire livelihood, and you know, and it's, to me, I think, well, it's, it's yeah. not for me. It's just oh. a, it's a hobby for me. You know, I enjoy doing it, and I'll go out when I can get out. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, that's exactly. Well, <laughs> when you talk about motorbikes um, and yeah. that type, that field of things, if I said that I, I've hired in my garage, I've got a Vespa GTS and a Vespa PX, so I'm a scooterist. Yeah. <laughs> you, see, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm, I well, experience. <laughs> Let me tell you, shall I, shall I, I'll tell you a little story. <laughs> I haven't got any scooters in my garage, all right? However, mm. 
I did own a scooter shop. I used to go out to Italy and bring the bikes back and did restore you? them. Ambretta's Vespers, yeah. Oh. Um, all that sort yeah. of stuff. Mm. Yeah, I had a shop to do it. So I'm a scooterist at heart as well. Yeah, everybody's a scooterist at heart. There you go. <laughs> Sipping about on the, on the Inchelli. Yes. P.S. <laughs> Harley's our poop, Richard's <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. my next bike will be a Harley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got I got a story. I got why we're there. I just I got to share a story. Um, I, I have a friend who who's worked on Harleys all of his life. He's ridden Harleys. Uh, great guy. He's he's very well known in the in the the community for building motors and stuff. He's built uh, motors for racing and stuff. All Harley. And yeah. I don't know what how it come about, but he got a little scooter. Uh, like it'll go seventy, eighty miles an hour, but it's a you know it, it it's like a bright red mm-hmm. scooter, little wheels, got the little box in the back to carry stuff, and <laughs> that guy loves to to ride that thing. Mm-hmm. I I really mm-hmm. think. I, you know, I'd, I've made fun of him. Like, you know, I haven't seen you out on your bike in a long time. He's like, I got the scooter. Why am I going to go out on the bike? You know, he just, <laughs> he loves that thing, man. It, it You know, I, one time my brother was telling me he, he was driving down the highway and there's Mike with tires hanging off of him and he's on a scooter just flying, doing about 70 as fast <laughs> as that thing would go, man, with Harley oh, tires strapped to him. Seven, mm-hmm. Seventy miles an hour on on a on ten inch wheels is particularly it's hairy, scary. but fun. <laughs> scary, I've done it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great because uh, I mean it, well, I'm talking about um, two thousand, uh, around mm. about uh, ninety nine two thousand was when I had my shop yeah. in Ipswich, and oh, um, nice. my business partner, his parents um, owned a house in Ipswich. I used to we used to yeah. fly out there. Scout around, find the bikes, and then we'd go mm-hmm. down there and in a van and bring them back. Yeah. And um, the last time I went, um, I went down there, and every shop I went into, they were telling me about a guy who was in front of us, and he had a lorry and he basically a container, and he was yeah. just loading up with um, mm-hmm. with Lambrettas and Vespas, yeah. anything scooter related. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, Mike Wolf from American Pickers. He was in front of us. Uh- Oh, yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah they're, 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 they're big in the states as well. They're, they're big clubs. Yeah, a lot of this you can still find stuff. There's guys, um, Swiss Tony, um, my mate. Well, a, a YouTube friend of mine, a Facebook friend of mine. He, um, I've screwed this. He he still brings vans back, van loads back. You know, two, really? two, three, four at a time. But he, they're, they're still out there. I mean, they're, they're not, you can not think as cheap as they were. No, t- <laughs> well, you think he. Uh, Tatty Series Two, like you know, you know how they come back, come across Tatty Series Two in uh, yeah. shed condition, two and a half grand. Yeah, yeah so that's what yeah. they're banging them out for. Ooh, I know. Uh, well, t- I'm, I'm, sorry, go on, Mike. I was just going <laughs> to say tonight on the All Metal Mode Podcast UK, <laughs> we're going to talk about motorcycles and scooters. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should, uh, sorry, Mark. No, um, that's okay. Say. That's okay. I got right into it too. Um, Aaron, Aaron, South Coast detecting. Uh, I know. I've just seen that. Grim Bleeper has found a second gold standard this year. He posted year. A, a vid, and it's got four thumbs down already. Why? So many jealous Why? people on YouTube. Yeah, Man, I hate yeah. that. I hate oh, that. That old. that drives me crazy. You know, Why uh, do people do that. I don't know. I, you know, I have never. I've come across videos that that I really dislike. Or you know, I hate when they say, "Found a gold coin." Watch the video. You know, and it's they've got a picture of an old gold coin. Then you watch the video, and they found a chocolate gold wrapper or something. You know what yeah. I mean? Those mm-hmm. aggravate me. But I would never do a thumbs down. I just okay. I'm done with that video. But well, why? Like, it's got to say it. Why people know, do that is it's just awesome. absurd to me. I was watching. Go on. I was just going to say I was watching one of Addicted to Bleeps videos, and I just loved it. You know, it was so good. He does some really great videos. And I'm scrolling down. I was going to leave a comment, and I noticed he. I think he had like 14 thumbs down. And I thought, how could you yeah. thumbs down? And you know, it's it's jealousy. It's you know people that don't understand the time. 
that that somebody like him puts or you guys put in your videos and stuff and yeah. it's sad it's the world we live in you know th- those same people would never say to you know those are the same people to your face would say oh great videos love watching your videos but yeah. then they'll go mm-hmm. give you a I mean, thumbs down i've sure. just looked and he's got 79 likes versus four like and dislikes so mm-hmm. that's not that's not bad really yeah no, but there shouldn't be any, really, should there? No, of course there shouldn't. Not for him fine of an item. A second goal stay on. I just, I just uh, liked and commented. I oh, know. As you imagine, I, I've, I've never found a gold stater, but uh, that's one on my bucket list, as well as a, a spearhead and all the, oh, all yeah. the other pieces, you, you know. That's cool. But that'd be great, wouldn't it? That'd be amazing. Oh. Yeah. Absolutely. Sorry, Sorry about okay. that. <laughs> uh, I think we're going <laughs> to... I'm going to work on getting uh, Richard on. I hope he's ready. So, Dean, it has been great. Is there anything else you want to say before... Uh, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Always great to be on. Um, yeah, absolutely. Always nice, great to have you on. Yeah, nice to speak to... Uh, and, and nice to know you actually found real gold as well. Andy. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> karma, karma, yeah, really yeah, positive. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah. No, it's good to speak to you, Dean. Yeah, you if too. You look me up, if you look at mm. look me up on Facebook, and you yeah. can see um, bikes that I've restored. Oh yes, yes. I'll be an advert for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be. It. I've, as I say, um, get my Facebook group, Shilling King Mountain Centre UK. If you um yeah. if you if you find it and get in there then um yeah all right it'd be nice Good to that. have you <laughs> Mike knows that is anyway yeah thanks Mike absolutely brilliant oh, I saw always, always nice listening. to have you oh hey as they, as they say you were a matron have a good <laughs> take night. care guys you too cheers man cheers bye so, who are we uh-huh. going for now now we got Richard Lincoln Are you with us Richard Hello, mate. Uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I uh, do. You guys, uh, I'm sorry. I know this is metal detecting, but I, Andy, do you ever mess with some of the old British bikes? Um, I don't. No. I don't. But I've got a couple. I've got a couple of bikes in my garage at the moment, which are um, are they? They're not mine, and I've been working on them. Um, and they're Italian, classic Italian ones, Ducat, Ducati, and uh, oh. a bike called a Mag, which oh. is a uh, which is uh, which is a bike that was built by Arthur, uh, Arturo Magni, who was uh, the chief racing engineer for MV Augusta in in Italy. Um, I've got I've got those. They're all handmade, so it's a beautiful it's a work of art. It is, but uh, I've sort of rescued them from um, a guy again in Wales who uh, he's got barns full of motor- motorcycles, and he's got a he's got a love affair with italian classic italian bikes but he um he's got some british bikes as well but he he's he's a lovely fella but he just tends to buy them wheel them into his barn and just leaves them and <laughs> start rotting away yeah that's <laughs> so crazy. I've, managed, I've got a couple of them which i'm just putting you know sorting out for him um yeah. and, and he, he said to me he said i can i can ride them but anyway oh. this is a metal detector yeah let's get let's get back on it um yeah <clears throat> Richard, what what scooter do you ride? <laughs> yeah, a 2005 Yamaha V Max. <laughs> oh right. yes, okay. Oh, I saw yeah. your comment. Yeah, it was very good. <laughs> yeah, the uh, it's the full the full power version. It's wonderful. It's got two pogo sticks for front suspension. It's got yeah. the uh, springs out of a couple of big pens for the rear suspension. The brakes right. are made out of wood. Uh, yeah. The <laughs> the tires are the big joke balloon tires. And the frame's got a hinge in the middle. Um, basically, it's the scariest thing you'll ever ride. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I've not ridden one of those. Have you guys? Uh, have you guys seen the movie? I think it's called The Fastest Indian in the World. Yeah, it, that, no, I, I love that. I love that Fast movie. Indian. That is yeah. one of yeah. my all-time favorites. Okay, let's get to metal detecting, guys. Uh, <laughs> Richard, I you you going to tell us about the new Rudis or well correct? to be quite honest Mike there's not really a lot you can tell uh, unfortunately um, they're playing their cards very very close to their chest now all I do know that it is going to be waterproof 
uh, and they're absolutely 100% everything that you talk to them about it. Um, they'll, they might mention uh, this or that, but they always say, and it will be waterproof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's going to be a waterproof machine. Uh, the they're aiming at telescopic and foldable, basically. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a machine that's easily transportable. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a rechargeable machine. So yeah, the, the batteries will be an on board. Uh, Eric's decided he's going to go for a color LCD. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which he 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 said he wasn't going to do. But uh, mind you, when he bought out the 71, uh, he bought out the 71, he had it uh, set up how he hunted with it uh, and said that, you know, it was uh, the machine was you know pretty much spot on and that's how it should be. But he listened to what people had to say and he went on to the uh, the update that we had earlier this year. Mm-hmm. So he listens to what people have got to say. So obviously he's listened to what people have got to say about a colour LCD and decided, yeah, OK, we'll go with a colour LCD. But as I say, they're playing their cards very, very close to the chest yes, and they're they not letting on. Mm-hmm. They're just I've, not letting on. It's not fair. <laughs> I keep I keep getting hold of his wife, Wyola, and I'm hoping I can pry something out and she just won't, she won't have it. She's a sweetheart. She has always been so nice to me, and they're such good people. But she will not; she she's not spilling the beans. Um, no. But I managed her last night. What what machine are we talking about? Sorry, I missed that. The Rudis- sorry, it's the the update to the. Uh, well, it's not uh, it's not an update to the Alter seventy one. It's a new machine from uh, Rutus. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Um, the the last time we talked, you hadn't had a bunch of time in it. Um, uh, I'm guessing you've gotten out more with it. What's, do you have anything to add about the 71? And I don't think the update, I don't, I, I, we sure hadn't had the update long if we'd had it at all yet. No, when we last spoke, the update was imminent. Um, yeah, we, we were, it, it was just starting to be rolled out. Uh, sorry, that isn't imminent, is it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the the update was just starting to be rolled out. There weren't many machines in the country that uh, that had been been updated. Uh, yeah, the unfortunately this year I've had a I've had family problems this year. People keep on dying. Uh, Sorry, I haven't that. managed. To, yeah, it's uh, it's facts of life in it. Unfortunately, um, but with one thing or another, I haven't had a lot of chance to get out this year. Uh, but I've used it a few times with the updates. And yeah, the I think it's um I think it really is a case of the original version, like the V one and the V two, if you like. Uh, they're two different machines. Yes, they really yes, are. They the are. Uh, I I think I prefer the V one. Really, um, but yeah, yeah. But then that's probably because I was more familiar with it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the I've, I've been bouncing between the Rutus and the Equinox, and to be quite honest, I keep putting the Equinox away and just getting the Rutus out. Mm-hmm. The um, I find the Rutus a hell of a lot easier to learn. Uh, sorry, a hell of a lot easier to use, and it's prob- again probably because the amount of time I haven't had to put into detecting this year. Right. With the Equinox, you go out and you've got to listen to it. You've got to concentrate with it. Um, with Rutus, you just go out and it knows what it knows. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's very sensitive. Uh, it's quite a deep machine. The the discrimination on it is fantastic. It really is fantastic. Mm. Uh, with the Equinox, I keep on digging uh, deep iron. Now, apparently, the more you use it, the more you, you get used to the, uh, the deep iron. But to be quite honest, I haven't got time in my life for that. I just want to get out there. I want to detect. Uh, if it's deep iron, I don't want to know. I don't want to dig it. But the Equinox, I haven't got time to be learning all that. I've I've heard people with the eight hundred starting out, or the or the Equinox, whichever one, will struggle with some iron. But there's ways to get around that completely. Um, but I get what you're saying. You're <clears throat> you're using what you know and stuff. But uh, I, I know some people that have struggled with the the Equinox a little bit, but then they get it, you know, and then they just, they love it. Um, matter of fact, my co-host on the American show Tuesday night, he's got an 800. And, uh, I mean, he's got Rudis CTX, uh, an E-Track. He's got uh, an AT Pro. I mean, this guy's got, he's got the ORX. He's got an Amphibio. And um, 
he kind of put the 800 in his closet and and just forgot about it a little bit and recently he's like you know i'm hunting with my friend that got an 800 at the same time and mike he's going back and finding stuff where we've where we've pounded and he said you know i think i just didn't give it enough time i think it's a little bit more to learn but i think it's worth it you know from what i'm hearing it's worth it now how it how i haven't used one how it performs against the rudis or anything i can't i can't really say but um Oh, they're saying we dropped out. Uh, do we sound any better? Well, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, you're still here. They're saying me and Andy have dropped out. No, no, not uh, Andy dropped out. Oh, oh, did we lose Andy? If we lost Andy, I'll I'll get him back, guys. Um, I'm showing him still on. No, we did lose him. I'll call him in here in a second. But uh, we we've, we've got to get him back. I haven't finished taking the Mickey out of him about the scooters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Um, but Hello. There you are, Hello, there you are. Fella. Lost you. You're all right, mate. But, uh, this is Mike. Oh, hi, Mike. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking, I'm listening to you on Spreaker and talking to you here. <laughs> we lost you somehow. I don't know what happened. No, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what happened. But I'm, I mean, we Turn down Hello? Spreaker, though. Sorry? Turn, turn the show down. It's echoing oh, through, okay. but, uh, turn that down. You know, I've used a, a lot of detectors over the years. Now I haven't used the 800, but the Rudis is absolutely one of my favorites. You know, I like a lot of different detectors. I, I you know, I'm one of those people that, you, you know, I, I'm kind of in, you know, there's kind of two groups. There's, you know, learn, learn one detector really good and then there's others that like different detectors. I'm I'm in that group because, you know, I don't I don't think you build a house with a sledgehammer. You know, it takes a lot of tools and, and depending on what I'm gonna do and what I'm hunting for and ground conditions, I, I think you can you you know, there's no detector that's perfect that does it all. And uh so the Rudis has really become absolutely one of my favorites. It's a just a brilliant detector. It's a brilliant turn on detector but you can highly modify it, and I love that. And I know we've oh, yeah. talked about it a lot on here, so I'm not going to go there. But I will say, you know, I can overlook a lot of things. Perform, or I can overlook a lot of things about a detector if it's not performance related. And and I will say, after having like the Amphibio that breaks down to nothing, and that you know some of these shafts are so comfortable and lightweight that sometimes it is you know when i take the for example if i take my wife's car and i take the rudis i've got to knock it all the way down and it barely fits in the trunk i've got to use rechargeable batteries um all that but when you look at performance for me it's not lacking anywhere um, like you said, it's deep, it's fast, it works great. Um, I like the new version, and what I like about the new version is is the Iron Audio, and that was actually a recommendation of mine to Eric because <clears throat> I often hunt in heavy iron, and I want to be able to turn the volume down. I want to run it wide open with the volume, the iron volume down. And um, I'll tell you something else. Uh, you can, on the... On the 90 to negative 90 scale you can pick up pottery and when i first heard that eric said that and it kind of went in went one ear and out the other and i didn't give it much thought we have here in the united states our history on you know we didn't have the iron age we didn't have you know but what we did have is we had indians here for thousands of years who used pottery and stuff and it could be a great tool to hunt down some of that pottery and hunt down camps and stuff like that. So I think it's brilliant. Uh, my friend has used a negative 90 plus 90 scale quite a bit. And, and he said, although it fall, the, the pottery falls on the negative side, he, he does, he can hear a tone difference between iron and pottery. And, um, you know, even here we had, you, you know, 
your earliest settlers often didn't use iron. They they used wood for everything. They even staked their houses together with wood. So sometimes it's really hard where, you know, they always had pot. I mean, pottery has been used for thousands of years. And so, I have... Uh, so why why would a, a detector pick up pottery? Is it because of the 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 firing process? Yeah, it's the mineralization of it. The, the mineral yeah. minerals in it, I would I would have to assume is the only thing I can figure. It has to be the minerals in the pottery because you know yeah. pottery comes from the ground. It makes sense. Mm. You know, when you go right the way back to, I mean, I, I started out in nineteen hundred and frozen to death. Uh, my first machine <laughs> was a C scope BFO. 50 i think i'm pretty sure it's a 50 uh the 70 was the posh one it had the meter on it so uh with the bfos you used to tune those and um you tune it one way to pick up metal you tune it the other way and it pick up uh mineralization uh so it, it basically what Rutus has done is they've taken advantage of that feature uh and they've they've built that into the uh the auto 71 the v2 version of it Mm-hmm. What you, what you have to tune it in though, or, or it's already no, no, uh, just no, the, 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 the Rutus has already got it in there uh, with the V two. It's already got it in there. It'll work plus ninety or minus ninety. Uh, that's basically uh, degrees of um, identification. Yeah, on their uh, well, on their VDI. And and here's think, something that'll that that will get Andy. Andy, the the VDI, it's got two different ranges, negative 90 to plus 90, but it's also got 1 to 120. And what you get with the 1 to 120 is great separation. Um, yeah. You know, where, like, depending on how, the last time I had it, set, the way I've had it set up recently, a dime will come in around um, 93, 94, and a quarter. I know these are American coins. And an Amer- uh, American quarter will come in around 107. Well, on like, uh, like for example, my CTX with the v- 50 VDI scale, that's one of the big turnoffs for me for the Equinox. On on the CTX, uh, a dime would come in around 40, 445, I believe, and a quarter would come in at 46. Well, oftentimes, depending on the ground conditions, they both were the same, you know, and and then pennies and and zinc pennies would sometimes, you know, copper penny versus a zinc penny would sometimes bleed together and stuff. You don't get that with that high range of VDI numbers. It's it's a big, I love the 120 range. Like, it's hard for me to even go to a 100 range now because there's just so much good separation with that. Um, Yeah. But uh, I, I'm really excited. I, I think it's a great idea to have a collapsible shaft, uh, an internal battery. That's what everything is going to. I think that's just brilliant. Yeah, just I mean, brilliant. Eric's certainly listening to uh, to what people are asking for. Uh, it's just a real shame that the uh, the roots hasn't. Oh, um, sorry. Somebody's just put up. Richard just fell off his chair. I actually just got up to turn the light on. It's getting dark here now. The um, yeah, the uh, it, it's just a shame the route is, it doesn't get the exposure and hasn't got the fan base that uh, Mine Lab or XP have got because it it really is a machine that it it should be getting uh, it should be getting more exposure. Yeah, it should. It re- you know if <laughs> the machine's not lacking, what's lacking is, and they'll tell you this. I mean, they said it on the show when I had them on. You know, they're not. Um, uh, he's an engineer that, that loves metal detecting and, you know, she helps out. It's a family business. They don't have a marketing director and stuff, you know, they don't do marketing and, and things and you can tell on some, and, and that's okay. But what you, what you have is an engineer whose passion is metal detecting. And that, that detector really shows that without a doubt. Um, there's some great detectors out there. Absolutely fantastic! I love. Uh, I go between my Amphibio and my uh, and my seventy one, but there, there is. I mean, you know, I say this, and I've said it over and over, and, and it's because it was just so apparent to me. Even the first time out, I, there was just something special about the seventy one, and I, I couldn't put my finger on it. Like 
and, and then when I, you know, after I used it a while and found out that Eric was also the engineer, it's like, ah, oh, and you know, this guy goes out and meddled it. His wife told me, you know, she's a sweetheart. I don't know. I'm sure you've talked to her, but for those of you who don't know, they're just great people. And, and she said, Mike, his passion is metal detecting. She's like, you know, he loves us and he loves me and the kids, but his passions, but, and it shows, you know, and that's the guy who's making these detectors. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing for me with the, uh, the Rotus was take it out of the box, put batteries in it, turn it on, off you go. Mm-hmm. You you don't need uh, you if you've got experience with using virtually any metal detector, you can pick up the rotus, just turn it on and go, and you'll you'll be searching. And the the interface for it is so uh, intuitive. Yes. Yeah. You, you you don't need to sit down and read the book. Yeah, it's it's a good idea to sit down and read the book. You're going to find out a lot more of the machine's capability, but. You don't have to. You can just take it out of the box, put a battery in it, turn it on, and go detecting, and you'll find stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's a. But you know, with that said, if you if you run into a situation, hot rocks, coke, whatever it might be, you can. That's why you need to read the book. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can. You can make that detector do anything you want. You know, I was just talking to a friend, and I said. You know, if the 71, if they're going to do something similar to the 71 and waterproof, I said, I can't wait. Because, you know, like we with that 120 VDI, the separation from pull tabs and, and aluminum and gold and stuff, that'll be a heck of a beach detector. A heck of a beach detector with that, that separation. Um so I, I think I just wish them luck and, and continued support. Uh, great people, great detector. So how, yeah. how many units are they are they pumping out then, or is it sort of you know have they got a shop or? Well, uh, in the UK, the uh, the Technics are the importers that uh, Laura and Nick down at the Technics. They're the importers down here. Uh, I believe they're also selling through uh, LP as well, yes. uh, Leisure Promotions. Yes. Uh, the basically it, it's a uh, it's set up the same way as pretty much every other uh, metal detector set up. You, in a given area, you'll have an importer. The importer feeds out from there. They're, right. they're actually made over in Poland. Made in Poland. Another thing. Now I don't. I don't really have a use for it where I'm at, but something I would love to try someday, and I've heard some really good positive um, responses on it, it, you can run it in dual mode. So you can run it wide open, all metal mode, and then you can also, at the same time, you're in disc mode. And what? So basically what it's doing, if you get a deep hit and you're not getting it on on the disc side, it's telling you it's deeper than, than the disc side, which might, it could be iron, but it's, I know some really good finds that have been found at incredible depths by doing that. And yeah, they're going to dig a little more iron or whatever, but what that, what that dual side's telling you, what, what it's doing when, you know, it's saying, Hey, this is out of reach of the disc mode. Uh, you've got a deeper target here that the disc mode won't pick up. And it's already a deep detector. Um, well, yeah, yeah, but the uh, the lovely thing is that with the V two that uh, that came out, the um, oh, just in case anyone listening is confused, they're not two separate machines. The uh, the V two is a uh, it's a programmable upgrade to the uh, the V one. So on the V two, the what Eric's done again, it's in response to listening to people. Um, he's made it so that the machine will still give best guess. Even in, in in dual mode, even when it's out the out of range of uh, the discrimination, it will give best give its best guess on what the uh, metal is that you find it. It may not be hundred uh, percent, but you know it's uh, it, it's giving it best guess. It's what people ask for. It's what he's done. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Dual mode. It, dual mode is a really really strange one to use. Um, if you go back to the days when you had the uh, the PI machines, well, you still got PI machines with the um, the minor GBXs. Uh, I believe they're PI. 
Uh, White yes. still do the surf master. That's a P, uh, that's a PI machine. But back in the day, you, know, you had two choices: either PI or VLF. Uh, and the the PI machines, they they worked like um, oh, as you went over something, you had a constant hum. As you went over something, instead of it going boop boop, it went woo. As you went over, and that's what it does in the background with the uh, with the routers. But you're also, if it's within range of the uh, the, uh, have, I don't know, the, the the discrimination, if it's within range, you'll get the boop boop, but you'll hear it go boop boop, and then drop off again. It's uh, it's it's a really strange thing to hear, but for me, it's really pleasant. I like it. Yeah. Well, that hum in the background. Yeah, the, yeah, the threshold. It's not. It's not it's not a threshold hum. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose it is a threshold hum. But whereas with uh, like with the Equinox, uh, you've got the threshold hum that uh, if you go if you haven't got the horseshoe completed on the uh, on the mine load, when you go over iron, the threshold hum will just disappear. Well, uh, also, that, that, that's all, also in the background. Um, if it's the same thing, when it's in the gold mode on the yeah. Equinox, in the gold mode, and you've got this constant background hum and then when you hit something it'll it'll bring it up but it also shows you the the numbers on the well, on the I've display not used gold mode i've not used gold mode does it um does it uh peak so uh, it the noise it makes oh god i feel so stupid doing this on uh on no here. no but no it's you sound great right, mate yeah the, does the the noise it makes go sort of start off going hmm and then go hmm or does it go hmm boop hmm <laughs> Which way round is it doing it? What, 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 the do first it again? way is the way. No, no, don't do this. <laughs> don't do this to me because if you do, I'm going to tell my mum on you. She'll come kick you in the gut. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the first way is how the old PI machines uh, used to work. Yeah, we you you had the the threshold there, but then you'd get a yep. smooth peak up and then a smooth run off. Whereas with the Equinox, you get the the uh, you get the threshold. Uh, yeah, R two D two. Thanks for, thanks very much, John. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with the uh, with the equinox, you have got the the threshold, and then you'll get a signal, and it goes back to the threshold. I don't know yeah. which way around it works. No, that's how, that's what it does on the gold mode on there. Yeah, you've got you've got you've got the background hum. Um, and as you as you go over something, it, it will start to go up in tone and and, and peak and then come back down right. again. Um, right. But it will also show you. It also gives you the readout on the on the on the thing as well. So you know. Um, so let's say you go over. Let's for example, let's say you went over a bit of gold. It you'd get a high. Pit, it would go up 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 in tone, but you'd also get nineteen reading so, on the thing. It would go from nothing to nineteen. Well, so the, the, the tone give modulates. A, a, yeah, no, it's his turn now. Give us a for instance on how it sounds. Mm. I'm only going to say <laughs> modulates. Yeah, I think it's your turn, Andy, to, 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 to go some. It's my turn. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, mine's, very, mine's very harmonic. Well, you could be more uh, C3PO than R2D2. We don't know. <laughs> right. right. Probably more dark than anything else. Mm. <laughs> Yes, this is degenerating quickly. Right, yeah. right. Um, it, it's yeah, it's it's it's. Let's just go with it's really cool. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> we'll settle on that. Um, yeah. I'll tell you something else that that recently I thought was pretty cool. Uh, my co-host on Tuesday nights, like I was saying, he's got one, and um, uh, excuse me, he we had we have we have talked about. The reason it's the Alder 71, it has 71 frequencies. Now, you don't use, you, you know, all 71 aren't aren't important, but what it gives you is if you have EMI issues, it's adjustable by 0.2. I think it's fair to say it has five or six, you know, I mean, because you, you use a range. You know, if you're at seven versus eight or nine you're not talking about a big range on but it, it's adjustable from 4.4 to 18.4 and 0.2 increments well yeah. talking to eric he said you know the reason he did that was for emi issues let's say you, you want to hunt in 7.4 and 
and you find it noisy from EMI interference, you know, seven two to seven eight, you know, seven to seven eight is going to be the same. It's just you're, you're you're getting it to where it'll run better with EMI issues. Well, you know, my point has been I've never ran into an EMI issue. Period. When I first found that out, before I had one, I thought. Ooh, I bet this detector is really susceptible to EMI interference. It's not. It's amazing. But my friend who got one, he said, you know, this was after he had it for a while. He said, I haven't been across the street. He goes, everything's buried. All the electric's buried under the ground stuff. He goes, Mike, I've never been able to use anything over there. I'm going to go try it. And uh, I, I don't ask me where he was at as far as what, what kilohertz he was at, but he had to change it a little bit. And that thing was running as quiet as could be. He was blown away. Cause he's, you know, this guy has 15 detectors at, at the moment, roughly somewhere around 15. And, and, uh, he knows them all really good. And, and he said, first detector I can run over there with, cause of all the EMI. And, and so he was really impressed. It's, it's, uh, it's like Eric thought of everything, you know, even though I've never ran into an EMI issue one for the most extreme, it can yeah, happen. We get, we, we get the EMI over here from various sources. Yeah. Um, you can be detecting around other people. Uh, mm-hmm. You can hit the EMI. Uh, detecting too close to a, an electric fence, uh, you'll get the EMI. You uh, detect under power lines, you'll get EMI. Uh but the the flexibility of it isn't just in uh, being able to you know knock it out in point two increments, so you can knock out the um, EMI. It's also when you're down at sort of like four point eight kilohertz, uh, you, you've got a machine that's very very deep. Uh, not not um, it's not going to find like tiny little beads on the surface, but it is going to find like yeah, good size uh, like silver shillings, uh, silver florins. It's going to find them incredibly deep. Uh, knock it up to you know, the the 18s, and you're going to find the smaller stuff on the surface. Uh, but you're not going to find well, you might find the deep stuff. Depends on uh, on your luck. But you're not going to be quite as um, um, you're not going to be quite as uh, you don't really get as much ground penetration from it. It's it's very very flexible. Now with with silver, you uh, which the majority of people over here you, you're out, you're looking for your hammies. People want hammered coins. Uh, searching round about the twelve to fifteen kilohertz band that that apparently is the optimal band for uh, or the optimal frequency for uh, finding your silver hammies. So you can just uh, you know go out detecting in that sort of band. Uh, any EMI, you can knock it out. Simple. But you get mm-hmm. to choose which way you want to go with it. Um, John O'Reilly said, "What what's yes. the uh, EMI like with the sensitivity cranks up?" Uh, yeah, how long's a bit of string, John? It's um, uh, it's it's not. It, I don't think you're going to have an issue if you get if you start getting noise, then you've got the sensitivity cranked up too much. Um, I don't think. I will ask my friend Matt, my co-host, because uh, he likes to crank a detector. I mean, he he'll run it almost unstable, and and you know, to me, a lot of times that's like trying to drive with your your you know driving the fog with your brights on. It's not necessary, but uh, I'm going to guess it's not an issue. Now, it one of the things I do like, and and I, I bet you'll agree with this, Richard. You can you can run that detector to where it's beyond unstable and what that what that tells me is there's plenty of plenty of power i hate you know for example the at pro the at pro is a very capable detector i hate that i can crank the sensitivity all the way up in most cases and it'll run stable yeah. i want to be able to run it to the max hey, and then back it off just a tiny bit you know i might even get it depending on the situation there's times I want to run it on that ragged edge and know I'm getting incredible depth where uh, th- that that is one thing I, I do. Another thing that I highly love about, about the Rudis, and, and a lot of detectors don't do that. You can crank them all the way up and they'll still run stable. And, I, you know, it's probably, it, it really doesn't matter in most cases, but I want to know that I can get, you know, I can get the most out of that thing. I can, you know, I can get it. You know, I want to know that there's something left when I set my, uh, set my sensitivity 
I want to know that there's there's still more power there if I wanted it or needed it. Yeah, the, the, there is that, but uh, if you if you're running it in full sensitivity in a mineralized area, uh, yeah, that's that's driving your fog lights on. Uh, yes. Sorry, driving your high beams on in, in the fog. Yes. You got you got to know when to crank it back. Yes. Well, what. What John was asking was, uh, what's the EMI like? Uh, hang on, I've, I've lost it now. I've lost his question. With, with the sensitivity what, what's turned the up. Yeah, with the sensitivity. Yeah, cranked up. The, the EMI and the sensitivity are two separate things. The, the sensitivity is all down to uh, where you are. If you start getting EMI with the sensitivity cranked right the way up, Rather than knocking the sensitivity back down, which you do with a, a fixed frequency machine, uh, you can, before you knock the sensitivity down, you can mess about with your uh, frequency, step it up a couple, step it down a couple, and see if you can lose the EMI yes. that way. So it's yes. got that, fle- that added flexibility to it. Yeah. Ex- explain perfectly. Thank you. Yeah. And John said if there's deep targets, sometimes it's worth running high. Yeah, absolutely. And that's... But you can run that thing to where it's totally unstable. It's it's got plenty of power, but you know it's easy to back down. I tend to run. I prefer ninety nine percent of the time to run stable, and I will run it all the way up till I get some chatter, and I'll turn it down. Now, again, if if I'm in heavy iron or something like that, sometimes you got to go way lower. Um, it's it's better to run stable and quiet than it is to try to interpret all that chatter and miss stuff in my opinion yeah I, yeah definitely i mean i i i run my own business during the week it's it's busy as you like i can have three or four things i've got to attend to at the same time uh when i get out of the weekend i'll put my headphones on i want that machine to run nice and stable i want it to run nice and quiet i don't want to have to work hard at uh, mm-hmm. discerning what's chatter and what's uh, a proper signal Okay, yeah. maybe yeah, maybe by doing that you might miss uh, a few of the fainter signals. But you know what? If you've missed them, you don't know you've missed them. You're not going to break your heart over it. But you yeah. do do find that by doing well. I find that by doing that, my detecting becomes a pleasure rather than a chore. Yeah, I don't want to work hard at detecting. I just want to. I just want to go out and detect and chill out. You just want yeah. to enjoy it. And, and that's yeah. you know, and that's the thing. It's it is one of the deepest detectors i have that thing is in, is capable of, of incredible depth uh you know right up there with the amphib the man that amphibia will go deep and so if i have to turn it down i still have confidence in it to find deep stuff um because i don't have to you know i don't do <clears throat> i don't test in test beds and all that stuff but what i do have is three dimes which are very fairly small coins here in the united states that i have at six eight and ten inches deep now i don't put any uh if i do a review or anything that that there's nothing to do with that test bed i, I just don't believe personally in judging a detector by it by a test bed you know where those coins are there's no nails by them whatever there's none on its side i just don't think it's an accurate way to judge a detector but what i can do is i can go out there and say okay is it hitting a six inch one okay is it hitting the eight inch okay it's not hitting the eight inch one let's let's see what we can do to see if we can get it and with the 10 inch dime i can run that detector stable no issues and hit that that dime with no problem i mean running just as stable as can be and um so that's a big plus you know i have detectors to get that 10 inch mark i really have to you know it's it's running chatty it's you know i've got everything cranked up i'm you know and and the rudis just just hits it like nothing so very impressive on depth yeah, I mean, John's uh, just come back and said test beds are a complete waste of time. Uh, I've got to disagree with him there. Test beds are, they have a use. The way that people use test beds to prove that one machine is better than another um, yes, I... machine. Yeah, no, forget it. It's it's not real world detecting. But uh, I don't know if you've uh, heard of a guy called Neil Jones, Mike. No. Um, Neil Jones is a, is a mine, lab, uh, mine Lab pro. He... 
goes around the uh, the bigger rallies and he runs training days and he'll use a test bed to teach people how to use the machine. Yeah, because he knows he sets the test beds up himself. He knows what the item is and he knows how deep it is and he knows the machine can find it. So when people don't find it, he shows them how to use the machine yes. to find it. Yeah, so <clears throat> depending on which way around the test bed use, if you want to prove one machine's better than another, uh, well, I'm sorry, it's like proving one car's better than another. It's all down to the uh, the driver. It's all down to what they want to get out yes. of the uh, out of the machine. Yeah. But uh, as a tool for teaching people how to get the best out of a machine, test beds do have their place. When when you have a brand new detector and you just want to see, you know, what kind of depth, and you know, you want to look at your VDI. It's great for that. You know, I've had a few that right out of the box, they won't hit the 8-inch time. They're very capable of it. It just takes a little tuning, but sometimes you got to play with it on something you know where it's at and how deep to kind of get to get that, that fine tuning and to get get out of it what you want. But what what drives me absolutely crazy, and I actually did a YouTube video on it, there's... there's there's more, don't get me wrong, but there's there's this one particular guy here in the United States that he, he's he got a test bed and he will absolutely put detectors up against one another and he will absolutely make or break, and, and you know, to his, to his viewers, a, a detector by running it through that test bed. And that's absolutely absurd. Um, you know, if you're nobody i don't care where you're at have we ever been out and a coin is laying there a deep old coin and it's always flat and there's nothing around it that doesn't happen you know there's trash mixed in there's iron often in with it and stuff and and he might even have a few set up like that but it's he also knows right where that coin is i want to see how it acts you walking up on a coin you don't know there with iron around it because it makes a huge difference. Yeah, real world detecting. Yeah, absolutely. What do, you, what, what do you think when you see guys on the on the YouTube channels doing air tests? Ridiculous. <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> that, that, that seems pointless to me, yeah. I'll tell you another yeah. one that drives me crazy is this test board. I, I had somebody in on the US uh, for the US show contacted me and he said Hey, so and so would be a great guest. He's famous for his test board uh, uh, videos, and you know, there's a lot of people out there that that just they're newer to the hobby and they don't know or whatever. But I, I those test boards are the most ridiculous thing you're going to see. And I'll give you a quick example. An E track, uh, a, a, a Mine Lab FBS metal detector. I have used a lot of detectors over the years, and although they're slow, they're heavy, they're, I don't think I've, no, I haven't used anything better at finding deep silver coins with a good ID better than than an fbs metal detector i I, it's just you know there's so many negatives to those detectors they're older i mean i still love them don't i respect them i'm not putting them down but when it comes to deep old silver coins and iron and stuff like that nothing i've ever used touches them and if you look at how those perform on those board tests it's absolutely horrible now, on the other hand, I've seen detectors that you, I wouldn't, I, I would have no interest in. I've used them. There, uh, there's a number of reasons why I'm not interested, and they, they will perform so well on that test board. But you get them out in the real world, and it's a totally different story. Um, so I, I hate those test boards. Those things are ridiculous. Well, the uh, the fun one that I saw was a, a guy. At- Oh, look, I mentioned no names, but he'd, um, he'd, he'd got a piece of wood that he put a bolt through the middle so he could spin it round. Uh, and on one end, he had a, uh, I think he had a, a, a bolt or a nail one end. And he had a, the other end, he had a, a hammy. And he set this up so that the coil of the metal detector was over the end of it and then spun it round to show how good, how fast the separation was for. 
uh, how, how fast the separation was for the target separation. And I just sat there and looked at it. I thought, oh, my God, what, what, this has yep. got to be the most ridiculous thing I've seen. Into. What's that, mate? <laughs> I said the effort he's put into it. <laughs> yeah, uh, but but for what? What does it prove? Because, yeah. you know, it, it, it proves that the, it's got fast recovery. But if it's got fast recovery, what, what, okay, we, we, the Goldbacks, you, you go back all the way back to the Goldbacks one. The Goldbacks one had incredibly fast recovery, but it was an 18 kilohertz machine that didn't have that much depth. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, right. So what are you giving over? Yeah. Yeah. See, I agree. I, that's, I, I just, those videos and, and what, what drives me, you know, I, somebody said, well, you know, you know, why do you care? Let them do their own thing. Well, the, the reason is, People are making their choices on what detector to buy by by this horrible, these horrible tests that that just aren't real world tests. And you know, people are saying, "Wow, that performs so much better on that board than that other detector." That's what I'm going to buy. You have people new to the hobby, or they haven't been in it real long, and they watch this stuff, and they'll buy a detector based on this guy. That you know, if you have the if you have the time to to build this huge test bed or you've got the time to make this board and, and it's all fancy and it's got all these different you you need to get out you've got too much time on your hands and you need to get out and detect that's all I can say yeah, yeah. the uh, the ones that I really like though the, uh, the, you know, the YouTube experts um, you know you got a brand new machine coming out for argument's sake the Xbox comes out and uh, one guy gets hold of the machine uh, on the very first day. Uh, by five o'clock the following day, not only has he mastered the machine, but he's also made Tom's trout, tr- uh, trout tickling uh, program. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's made up, a, given it a crazy name, and oh, this is the killer uh, mode for this machine. It's like what you you you've just got hold of a machine uh, that has been in the hands of, in the case of the Equinox, it's been in the hands of people like uh, Gordon Heritage. Uh, now, Gordon's a fantastically clever uh, detectorist. The guy really knows his stuff, and he was part of the development of that machine. But within 24 hours, you know, he, he was on the machine for weeks and weeks, testing it, uh, going back to mind lab and saying, yeah, we could tweak this, we could tweak that. Uh, but this one guy is like, got hold of this brand new machine and within 24 hours he knows more about the machine yes. than someone like uh, Gordon I mean come on give it over I've, I've, had, I've had my Equinox for about a year and I'm still still learning things and still trying things out on it you yeah know? absolutely and, and I, I can't see that ending it's just going to be an ongoing thing really yeah mm-hmm. that, that's all going to depend on how much time you, uh, you've got to put in the, into the machine yeah I, yeah, I will yeah. say and, and I, I will say this, I think, you know, with experience, though, and, and I'm sure you, you agree with this, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, having it out a couple of days is is ridiculous, but, you know, I can pick up a, a detector, I mean, you could throw anything in my hands, you don't have to tell me anything about it, and I will have a good feel for it after a day. Am I an expert? Absolutely not. Am I am I confident in giving out programs? No way. But, but that's that's experience, though, isn't it, Mike? Yes. That's, that's that's experience, years of experience, and which I haven't got. You know, which I'm I'm learning. Hopefully, I'm learning that now. But that's yeah. that's why you'll be able to do that. You know, just pick it up and, and get a feel for it because mm-hmm. you've got the the experience and and the background, haven't you? And, and, you know, I, I literally, I'll get a machine, I'll go out to my three coins, I'll just see, you know, if it's a VDI detector, what kind of reading I'm getting, and I'm gone. I'm out detecting, and I, I like to start off in a trashy park, and I just go dig and dig and dig. Um, I hate getting a new detector, because that's how I feel I have to test them. I'm going to dig aluminum and, and lead and trash, and because I want to see how it reacts. I want to see what it's doing. And that's your, if you've got a VDI detector, there's no better way to, to, uh, you know, see what the VDI numbers are going to be. I, I want to hear the tones are more important, but I want to hear those tones. I want to know what it's doing. And, uh, these guys that get them and, and they literally are making or breaking a detector on their channel. 
from a, a test bed or a board is absurd. Yeah, because they know more than the guys that have been developing it. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. We we have a guy here in the United States. I actually did a video that replying to him. I don't do videos out detecting. I don't get a lot of time. And when I have time, I want to go out and I want to detect. I don't want to stop and try to do a video and explain. I, I That's my getaway. That's my getaway from the kids and work and everything else. So I just want to get out and hunt. But I did sit down after a hunt one day and, and responded to uh, just a, a video he did that was just absolutely just rude about a certain detector and just so uncalled for. You know, he's judging this detector on his little test garden. And uh, this guy, it, you know, I, this is some of the stuff I get tired of. He's he, he knows it all just asking. My God, I've used tons of detectors over the years and I've been detecting 20 years and I still learn. You know, there's still things <coughs> that I get taught and learn and I, I'm a sponge. I'm, I'm still a sponge after 20 years and, you know, this guy is going to sit here and trash a detector and tell somebody not to buy it because, you know, it performed bad in his little test bed. Yeah. Yeah. He's, <laughs> what was his mindset on that day? Because that's, uh, I don't know about uh, anyone else, but with me, uh, if I've got a lot of stuff on my mind, then going detecting is just a waste of time because I'm not going to settle into the machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll get I'll get get the machine out. I'll go put put the headphones on, and where I should be thinking about what I'm doing, I'm thinking about everything else that's buzzing around in my head. If your mindset's wrong, now nah, forget it. Mm-hmm. That's true. Well, I'll tell you what I think he was doing in this particular video is, you know, I think he's trying to get detectors from the manufacturer to play with and and test and stuff, and. What I think he was doing, it was actually a Tesoro, and Tesoro was going out of business, and he trashed it. And I think that he did it to try to, you know, up his, uh, I think he wanted to cause some drama. I think he wanted to, you know, act like, hey, look look at me, I'm, I'm trashing this detector because I'll tell you how it is. But, you know, the sad thing is, I'd take that detector he was trashing, and I'd, on uh, some spots I'd go kick his butt with it, um, you know, because I've used it. I know it, I and I know what it's capable of. And and he just gave it a really nasty review. And I think it was do, he was doing it because they, you know, it was to show off, which is he's ridiculous. Trying to make a name, yeah. He's trying to make a name. If, if he's annoyed you that much, Mike, just just give me his name. I've got some friends out in America. We can take care of it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's not better. it will be Uh, when he ends up no let's not go there (laughs) uh, the Divi detector has said I I do love Nocta Macro I've had the Racer 2 and the Impact but got the opportunity to use the XP ORX and it's very well suited to my detecting style so I haven't looked back that's great Um, you know I I, I think they're all good I think they all have a I've got a friend, uh, my my good friend, uh, my co-host again. He's got a he's got an ORX, and he he loves that. I'll tell you, he he says, you know, it's not that it's the he loves relic hunting with it, you know, field hunting and heavy iron. And he said, you know, I have other detectors that will do as good and maybe better, but he said I like it. He he gets it gets the job done really good. But he said it's so light. He said it's like swinging my arm all day. You know, versus some of these heavier detectors, and that's the big selling point for him. It works good, don't get me wrong, but that's you know, I, hey, get what works for you. I, I mean, you know, what works for me might not work for you. You know, another thing about the reviews and stuff, I there's been a couple detectors throughout the years that I know are really good detectors. Um, you know they've been tested they people find good stuff on a regular basis they they talk about the depth and everything else that i hate i can't stand but i'm not going to sit here and trash it because it doesn't mesh with me you know what works for me might not work for you it's that simple yeah, I, think, 
I think the David Detectorist has summed it up beautifully there. It's very well suited to his detective yes. style. Yes, love that. Love that. As, as, as long as you've settled settled in with the machine, if you formed a bond with that machine, you crack on. Yeah, as, be, be quite honest, my own attitude is as long as you're uh, enjoying your detecting, I don't care what you're using, you can go out with uh, a two ninety nine. Uh, they're, they're selling one in Lidl's. Do you have a, a, a shop in America called Lidl's, Mike? <laughs> no, sure don't. No, it, it, well, Lidl's is sort of like uh, stack them up and knock them out cheap sort of shop. And I gotcha. Some of the stuff in there is phenomenal uh, value for money. Other stuff it, that's in there, you wouldn't use it as ballast on a boat. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, uh, they're selling a, a detector in there at the moment. It's £50. Pound. Wow. Yeah, now, yeah. I've got no idea how good this machine is. I'll be quite honest, for £50, I wouldn't expect uh, much performance out of right. it. Right. But, but if you put that detector in your hand, you go out in the field uh, and you enjoy what you're doing, crack on, enjoy it. That's, to me, that's what it's all about. That's the main thing, isn't it? If you're enjoying it, you know. It's Absolutely. like anything, isn't it? When you, when, you, when you get fed up with things, when you stop enjoying it, that's the time to stop doing it, isn't it? Uh, is it? Because I got fed up with working years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I agree. I you know whatever, whatever suits you. You know, find don't listen to all the hype about you know you need this detector, you need that, and you know find what works for you. If you got a shop, you can go play around and you know try a couple detectors out. I because what what I believe in and what I love, you might it might not work for you. It might not be what you want. We might be in totally different ground conditions. We might be looking for totally different things and uh it, what's suited for you might not be suited for me. I I uh you know, I I could tell all kinds of stories and and I'll, uh, but I will say this one I Got a friend that uh, been detecting thirty. I want to say thirty some years, and very, very accomplished detectorist. Very humble. Um, just a real down to earth. Somebody's opinion that that I've I've really trusted, and um, he he met somebody local to him with a. I'm not going to say. Let's say under two hundred dollars a detector and he was blown away by what this guy could do with this detector and how many good quality finds he he was he was finding you know and he's hunting side by side with this guy you know this isn't this guy's out detecting by himself and saying he found all this he said you know and and he understood already but he said you know it just proves the point that if you learn what you have and you know it in and out, and you take the time. You know, whatever works works. Yeah, but there is a there is another element to it. Yes, and that's the that's the luck element. The, well, uh, you, you've got these detectors out there, and the guy with that cheap machine could have been one of these uh, one of these guys that you can put any machine in their hand, and they've got the luck. Yeah. They're the one that you'll be going through the uh, going through a field. You're going to be digging rig ring balls and this guy's the one who with his 299 tandy special he's the one who's going to find a gold sovereign uh, and to be quite honest people like that you you just want to hug them warmly by the throat right right <laughs> yeah i think we've all hunted with somebody like that at one time or another i have i've hunted with some guys it's like wow there there is luck to it but you know and also i think you, you know it's you, you gotta, you gotta find something that'll that'll do what you need it to do. I mean, you can spend a thousand dollars on a detector that won't do what it need what it, you need it to do. And there's, you know, but there's a two hundred dollar dollar detector that'll do do what you need it to do better. You know, or or whatever. And and I think that's you know, I used to get people all the time that. Hey, I want to go find really deep silver coins. You know, I want to find silver coins. I love old coins. Well, <clears throat> in the particular area we live in, you know, you you need something that's going to, in, in <clears throat> most of the time, it's going to need to get six plus inches depth and it's, it better handle trash and iron well. <clears throat> and at least at the time, I can s- safely say that you couldn't spend 
two, three hundred bucks and buy something that would do that consistently. And so, you know, you do have to have uh, an, an understanding that sometimes, you know, with the more expensive machines does come some real advantages in, in some cases. Well, I think there's a gas leak. Everybody's gone. We're just done. I've I've done uh, more I'm out with all my talking. I think it's about time. I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, still here, but I couldn't add to what you said. I think yeah. I get I think I get on my rants and it's just I, I bore everybody and uh nah, put everybody mate, to sleep. Nah, you, <laughs> you, nah, you're no, right what you're saying. I do I do agree. There is that element of, of luck as well though. You got you gotta be lucky. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> There's some people like, out there that really do stink of luck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> true, very true. I have a friend uh, in Ohio that the uh, the guy he hunts with just every time they go out, I I you know he'll call me afterwards. It's like, what'd you find? I found you know he found he he'll find cool stuff. It's like, uh, what'd your buddy find? And he's like, I don't want to talk about it. You know, it's like every time they go out. Every single time, and and his buddy just he'll have the find that that really cool find, you know. It yeah. happens though. Yeah, I used to detect alongside someone, uh, she, uh, female detector. She came up to me. She said, "Oh, should I found something that looks a bit like a fairy shovel?" I went, oh, <laughs> "What?" He, she said, "It's a fairy shovel, and it was a it was a square ended Celtic toggle, two thousand years old." <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> I, I just stood there and looked at her and went, I can't believe you found that. I said, what else have you had? Oh, she said, just this sort of like, I don't know, she said, it's, it's almost like it's a quarter of a a quarter of a circle. So I said, all right, let's, let's have a look. So she pulled it out. It was a cut quarter of a Stephen Penny. And it's like, what? I'd, I'd found nothing. <laughs> I found nothing. She, and she'd found a quarter of a silver round thing and a fairy shovel. Right, <laughs> fairy shovel. Yeah. Oh, that's where, where, oh, that, that, that's what, I'll never forget her calling it a fairy shovel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so where is fairy her then? Um, yeah, I should have done. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done. Funny, the, funny the, thing, you're, um, Andy, you're up um, Suffolk way, ain't you? Yes. Yeah, it weren't too yeah. far from you. Oh, were you? Uh, no, no, where that was, we were um, detecting... Oh. Uh, just to the, I'll try to work out our north south. We're just to the west of Ipswich. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, so not gonna, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you where. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me. No, I know what you mean. No, but you're you're in Essex, though, are you? Yeah, deepest, darkest Essex. We're down uh, down at South End, uh, the area where you can't get no permissions for love nor money. Oh. The yeah. n- nearest permission I've got is an hour and a half drive. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I've got I'll, well. The nearest permission I've got that produces is an hour and a half drive. Uh, the closest per- permission I've got is about forty-five minutes up the road, just north of Chelmsford. Uh, I was saying uh, earlier on to Aaron, uh, it's it's a fifteen hundred acre farm and twelve hundred uh, acres of it. Are, are, it's just barren. You walk yeah. across it and it is silent. It's absolutely silent. But there's one part of it getting on towards a village that is quite lively, but yeah, twelve hundred acres of it, and there's just absolutely nothing. Yeah, wow. well, I'm, I'm, I'm quite I'm quite lucky because with my job, I I'm all all, all over the place. I was actually in Southend and Hockley and Benfleet today, but um, you should have popped in. Me, uh, me business yeah, over at Hockley. Oh, have you? Yeah, <laughs> I would have done known you. <laughs> yeah, it's um. Yeah, but I'm quite lucky because I go to a lot of uh, – I, I deliver medical oxygen to patients. So I obviously go to a lot of homes and houses and play, you know, far up in the farms and that. And you just get chatting to them and, and um, you know, try and get some permissions. But I've, I've detected in Ingotstone there was a, a let's go digging uh, yeah. dig. I don't know. Did you go to that? No. No, I, I try to stay away from – there's a couple of digs that I uh, – a couple of commercial ones that I go to, but I, right. I try to stay away from it. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the let's go digging. I mean, you've only got to be one uh, one letter out when you type that into the computer and, <laughs> and that, 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 that whole <laughs> thing. End up in a car park with your wellies <laughs> and your metal detectors surrounded by a load of blokes that you well, yeah, 
Hang yeah. on, that is metal detecting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> end up with a car- that is a metal detecting, really, mate. You end up in a car park if you only use your metal detector surrounded by a bunch of blokes. blokes around you, yeah. Either way, either way, you're good. I mean, it's the same one, you know, <laughs> half a dozen one, and yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, whatever floats your boat, I'm not one to cast yeah. dispersion. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're you're standing there with your detector and your equipment. Like, why doesn't anybody else have their detector? Why is everybody around that car? <laughs> What's going on up? Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Why has he got his video going? Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, oh, he must be one of those guys that does the YouTube channels. <laughs> right, right. Either either way, it's a good day in my book. I mean, either way, don't tell my wife that she'll kill me. I'm afraid she's going to no. come in here and <laughs> drag me out of here and Mike. beat the hell out of me. Oh, sorry. Mike, it doesn't matter if you're going to go on a metal detecting rally or you're going to go on the, what you're talking about. Pretty much at the end of it, you're still going to end up frustrated. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I've been frustrated at metal detecting rallies. But they, that. Um, but we went to Ingotstone, you know, and they they said it was a, you know, plenty of Rome and stuff and that. And I think a few things were found, but... Nothing major, but as as I said to you, I mean, I'm up at I'm I'm not far from Sutton Who, and our our um, permission is, you know, my wife works on a big farm up here and there, and they don't allow anybody else on there, um, other than the detective the detectorists when they come down. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's um, it's good, but but I have I'm, I'm lucky in that, as I say, where where I've been to various. Um, are you there? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're here. Oh, sorry. I was just looking at my phone because it went dead earlier, didn't it? Um, yeah, I've been. Yeah, I'm. I'm lucky because um, I've spoken to a few people and, and managed to get a, a couple of little um, permissions and that, but um, nothing major. But uh, yeah, we, we've got a, we've got a couple of them. But I know South End is is quite dire, isn't it down there? Well, it, there's. One farm down here where you, if you knock on the door, you say, oh, my, the farmer concerned, I've known him for years uh, through something else. Knock on his door, can't detect your land, he'll let anybody in his land, no problem at all. He's an absolute diamond, but his land's been done to death for the last like, 30 years. Yeah. Um, yeah, The but trying to get permission around here, uh, I've given up. Hmm. I've, yeah. just, I've, I've just given up. I've, I've Lived over in Hockley a couple of years ago. Uh, tried all the farms over there, and the big, the biggest thing, the biggest answer that I used to get was uh, that no, we have enough trouble with people coming on here without permission at night. Yeah, isn't you that know, horrible? Yeah. It's, a, it's horrible. just a killer, yeah. and there, there's nothing you can do to argue against it. Mm-mm. You know, no, the, you're right. What, you just oh, it's their land, isn't it? And you know, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I've where we go you know we've sort of spoken to them they've taken on some more land they don't own it they're renting it um and i'd i just i'm dying to get on there and i'm sort of i've spoken to the farm manager and sort of saying to him look you know we're a we're a trusted with trusted eyes you know we can go on a piece of land and we'll if we see anybody else that's been there or if people have been digging holes we can we'll pass that on to them um and it's sort of you've got to build that trust up with them haven't you um which you know, but I can totally, I totally understand it. At our our last club meeting, they had a guy. Um, there was a thing called the Hoxton Hall. Of, I don't know if you've heard of that. Yeah. Uh, and he's the landowner, and basically he started his he started his um, chat to everybody at the club by saying, "There's two things I ate. I ate motorcycles and I ate uh, metal detectorists." And he's in the metal detecting club. You know, and he said, and this is why, and he, and he explained what had happened with the Hoxton Hall, which was off of his land. Um, a lot of the stuff is in America now, and it's all tied up with, you know, people that are, are big, major collectors, um, and uh, there's nothing he can do about it. He can't get his own property back, you know. Um, yeah. So seen, yeah, it, is, it, it was quite... It was interesting listening to what he was what he was saying because it just you just think well, you know, if I was in his shoes, uh, you'd be the same. You'd be so frustrated, you know. Yeah. You talk about five um, five Roman bronze statue heads, which are sitting on somebody's mantelpiece in in um, in the states, which were bought, um, you know, illegally, 
but th- they just can't get them back. Yeah, that's that's a shame. That is a shame. Yeah, because in the same way that they've got them on their mental piece and they can't uh, prove the provenance of them being on their mental piece, he can't yeah. prove the provenance of it coming out of his land. That's well, no, he, he. Well, they they can to a he can to a point because when the police were involved, obviously, and they they traced back where it was sold from, and they've got photos the the original seller. It was it was a group of guys that had gone out night hawking and they found all this stuff and basically. They were in the village. They then sold it on to somebody else, who then in turn sold it on to a dealer. And they, but all the way down the line, photos were being taken. So they had all the photos, and they can say, "Well, that is the same. That's the same thing." Um, but what he's come up against is that the, the people that own it now, they've got a massive collection of antiquities, and he, they reckon that eighty percent of it, twenty um, percent of it, is legal, and the rest of it has been looted from countries all over the world um but these people they are so wealthy and we're talking about like billionaires um they, they're just fighting it he spent over a hundred thousand pound on on lawyers um just to to get to the situation that he's at at the moment and he's got a clause has been written in that these masks these helmet uh, these these heads um will return to the British Museum once the people, or I think it's a husband and wife that own them, um, once they've both passed off, passed away. So um, when they die, those will come back to the British Museum, but they won't come back to him. Huh. They've done a deal. It will come back to the British Museum and go on display for their, for their, uh, for their, um, you know, for them, but he can't, he can't get them back. So yeah, it's it's a bit of a hollow victory, isn't it? You, they, it's, they're going to come it, back to I where did, they should be. I did but, feel for him when we were talking. You know, I did feel for him, but um, you know, he's he's uh, he's a nice old boy, but you can see why he hates why he hates you know detectorists and that. Mm-hmm. I, I do, and do you blame him? I mean, there are those bad people in in our hobby that yeah. just man, they do so much damage. I, I just can't. You know, we we don't have the issues uh, like you guys do over there, but we have plenty of our own. And yeah. you know, it, it just it's horrible. I you see it all the time, and and you know, the, the thing is, we have to work to educate those people that are doing that stuff. You're not going to get them all, but the guy that goes into a park, he just bought a metal detector and he leaves big holes. You know, we got to, yeah. we got to educate yeah. those people. Any, any good we can do, we need to do for the sake of the hobby. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Um, you know, but, uh, uh, but the flip side of that is, um, and Richard will know this, they're trying to change the, the treasure laws in this country. Mm-hmm. Um, and and because they're trying to change they're, they're trying to change those because they've been they've been having their own way with it all for far too long and somebody's um, I think it was that Roman helmet wasn't it I don't know yeah, the, the something something Garrett helmet that's it yeah there was a, there was a Roman helmet found and um, it was it's a bronze so it does it's not classed as treasure um, and the British Museum. Looked at. It. I mean, this thing is a work of art, mm. and it's it. And the guy that found it, um, the British Museum said, "We'd like we'd like to buy it off you for thirty odd thousand pounds." Um, and he said, "Well, actually, I'd like to put it into open auction and see what happens." And he put it in open auction, and it got two point four million pounds. So <sighs> you have to ask yourself: Well, did the British Museum? Were they did they know that it was worth that sort of money, or there were collectors out there that would buy it, would pay that sort of money? Um, and if so, they're trying to get something on the cheap, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you end up with the situation where they're now trying to change the the, the, uh, the treasure laws, um, which I think is a bit silly, really, because they stops people from declaring stuff. You know, yeah. Well, the, yeah. the treasure laws with regard to uh, the bronze helmet is it was. I've done a quick Google on it. It was the Crosby Garrett helmet. Uh, and it sold for two point three million pound at auction. Um, 
the treasure laws have already been uh, been changed to accommodate a find such as that. Um, the I think uh, bronze axe heads as well. Yeah, the um, the treasure axe has been changed. That before, if you found a hoard of bronze axe heads, like bronze age, um, yeah. that that wasn't uh, wasn't declarable. Now it is. The the changes to the law. I've, I've to be on it. I haven't looked at them for a, a good few months. Uh, the the changes are reasonably sensible, but. Uh, I'm the sort of person that I don't like regulation. I don't like being told what I can and can't be uh, be doing. And for that reason, I'm inclined to fight against any change to the uh, the Treasure Act. The biggest uh, biggest thing for me with it, though, is it just seems to be another step towards complete control of the hobby. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And I agree with you on the other thing because I'm very, I'm the same as you. I can't stand it when people are telling you what to do and all that sort of thing. But I do, I look at it and I just think, well, you move the goalposts again for your, you know. But what it does, is, you know, the point I'm making is, is that it, it stops people. You're going to have people out there going, well, I have found this one gold coin now, and oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hand that in because if I do, it'll, it'll go. At our last meeting. Um, Everybody sits there with the with the fines liaison officer and sort of gives them bits so they can get it recorded. And I watched him. The guy in front of me had a silver thimble, and he took it as treasure. The the, the flow took it as well. That that comes under the Treasure Act now, and and took it. And I just thought, hang on a minute, a silver thimble, you know? That's that's nothing that the um, Essex Detecting Society. There was a this this was about five years ago. There was a guy that had some scrap silver, yeah, uh, and it, it it really was a it was a piece of silver that had no real form to it. Uh, the FLO basically turned around to him and said, "You should declare it up as uh, a potential treasure." And he said, "Well, how can you say it's potential treasure?" She said, "Well, until it goes through, uh, you know, coroner, you uh, you don't know." It ended up now. You you got to understand the reasoning behind it as well. But he ended up that guy had the police knock on his door, arrest him, and take him to the police station oh, because he, yeah, because he didn't declare that scrap silver up as treasure. Now, from the FLO's point of view, if she hadn't have involved the police, she wouldn't have been doing her job. Yeah, she's an officer of the Port Atlantic, which is scheme. Uh, she's employed by the council under the um, control of the British Museum. She's got a job to do. So she acted completely properly within her job. But it's a ridiculous situation. You know, the, yeah. the guy had found unidentifiable silver, uh, sorry, unidentifiable silver that could possibly have been pre-1725. And therefore, if it possibly could be, the Treasure Act uh, covers it and it says, yes, you should declare it. Mm. Yeah, now, the, now, the, the, the Treasure Act is quite ridiculous in some cases. Yeah, now, yeah. when they took that silver thimble... I mean, if they decide that they, I mean, he'll get money for that, correct? If it's declared as, um, if, if it's declared if it's, as treasure, yeah, yeah, if it's declared as tre- as treasure, then the museum decide that they want it. Then, yeah, they they can then hold. They, I think, they have a board, don't they? And then they <clears throat> they uh, decide the value. valuation committee. Yeah, um, but those valuations can be way well, below. Just, yeah, yeah, let's just say wildly off mark. Right, right. I like it. Yeah, that. Let's say that. Yeah, wildly off mark. What? A bit like thirty thousand pounds as opposed to two point three million pounds. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. But so, you know, yeah. <clears throat> you guys. I mean, I, I know there's no system perfect, but I would rather have a system like yours than what we have going in the United States because, I mean, at this point current point where we're at <clears throat> archaeologists and detectorists do not get along and uh i mean archaeologists here would rather see it sit in the ground and rot than us find it so there's no collaboration nothing's going you, you know but it's it's a it's a very different scenario here um i know people who have <clears throat> donated to museums and stuff only to find out that it was sold or they lost it 
you know, we're, t- we're talking a very different situation here in the United States, though. But it, it is sad that our history, although it doesn't, it's not like yours and it, we don't have the, the, the age, there is some really good history. I mean, the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812, the French and Indian, um, Civil War, obviously. And none of that stuff really ends up, so little of it ends up in, in museums. And a lot of it... It's not just, it's not greed. It's not, you know, people, detectors like me, look, I just, I find it. I love to find it. I don't need to possess it. I have very little of what I found over the years. I just, I love finding it. If, if it, but what I do have and what I've kept, you know, that didn't go to the property owner or, or you know, uh, some different people have ended up with some of my stuff. I'm, I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail, but I've never sold. I don't sell my stuff. It's not like that. <clears throat> but you know, what am I going to do with my stuff when I pass? I mean, we're we're only holding on to it for a brief time, anyhow. But there's going to be this history that I'm not I'm not dare going to donate to a museum for them to sell it or lose it. Or not properly take care of it. So, you know, that's a, you know, I do like what you guys have going on. I mean, there's been a lot of history learned because of the system you guys have. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's, it's better than uh, a lot of systems, especially when you look at the system um, on, the, uh, on the continent, where uh, basically treasure laws on the continent are pretty much the same across uh, all of Europe. You're not allowed to go out and uh, detect on purpose to look for items of historical or cultural interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's as simple as that. But uh, if you just happen to see the field with uh, a few tokens and now you're in the field just for fun looking for those tokens and as a, an aside to that, you happen to find a few hammered coins or, you know, uh, a thimble or you know some uh, a, a medieval mount. You haven't gone out looking for those. You found them as um as a consequence of going about your lawful business of looking for the tokens you spread about the fields, which There's is ridiculous. Around it. But yeah, it's still ridiculous. Yeah, it, is. it is yeah. because basically those, those coins. Uh, the medieval mount, all the rest of it, you can't go and report it because if you can't report it, there's going to be questions asked that are going to be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, but the uh, the situation you're talking of, Mike, where you've got uh, stuff that you've found and you're saying, you know, what will happen to that when you, uh, when you slip off this mortal coil? Mm-hmm. Well, that's where you've got a responsibility to your own history uh, to keep your own records. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that any so what you find, uh, you've, you you self record if you like. Uh, you do what the what we do with the FLO over here, uh, rather than going to the FLO and the FLO recording it for you. You record your own stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, of course, Aaron, and it, and it'll be passed. You know what I have is marked in in uh, in cases and and stuff. A lot of my, you know, I really got to a point. You know, I think when you get started in metal detecting. You know, a co- you know, I'm sure you can look back. You guys can remember back, and you found a common coin, and your first common coin. You're like, "Oh my god, that is so neat!" And then you find an old coin, then you find a really cool relic, and y- you have this need to possess those. Well, after so long, I just I didn't feel the need, and and you know, fortunately, I've been lucky. A lot of the the people that I've detected their property. A lot of ways you can get that that they do accept you is they love history themselves, and I have no better joy than to give them what I found off their property. Um, if they're in, you know, I've, there's been plenty of people like ah, I don't care, I'm not into history. What you know, especially farmers and stuff, and uh, you know, so you do keep. I mean, I couldn't toss it or anything, and I do value it. But it, if you've got a property owner who values what's what's the history of, of, of what's there, there's no greater feeling for me than to give it to them, you know, and let them, uh, display it and talk about it and keep it with their property. So that's, that's what I do. Um, I, of course I do have still plenty of stuff, 
but you know, my house isn't full from one end to the other if I, as if I'd kept everything, you know, I have some pieces that I like that, that I've put together for my brother. He's into history. He's got some of my stuff and stuff like that. So, but it is a shame that, you know, we, we can't even here, we can't even trust that it'll, that it'll stay in a museum. I mean, there's pieces, I hunted a town that was gone and I know this is very, very different for you guys, but for us in Ohio was pretty significant, a town that was gone by 1830s and it was a significant town. And I have, uh, I believe three cases of fines from that town and I would love nothing more than to, to donate it to that local museum but I've heard too many horror stories. And even though I've heard all these stories, I've still went and talked to him and the guy just didn't have much interest. And I thought, you know, he's like, yeah, we'll take it and stuff and, uh, you know, whatever. And I just thought, you know, if you can't appreciate this at least as much as I do, you know, and understand the importance and the significance of this, I, I'm not giving it up. I mean, there's no value there. It's not, you know, if you, you guys get what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Guys, the, the, the values in the history, the values in the information. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. where we are, uh, there's not a lot known about the Roman side of things and the stuff we've been getting. And we and when it's recorded, there's another little bit to the jigsaw, isn't it? Another little bit to what was going on in, in this area, you know, mm. which is good. At that site, I found some really nice coins, some really rare coins. For The town was very early for Ohio, and I found some great coins and stuff, but my favorite find was part of a pewter, either a fork or a spoon, and it actually had the initials, through research, it had the initials of the, the um, hotel's uh, owner. So I believe it came from the from the hotel. You know that that to me is is priceless. I could care less. The coins are cool. I love them. Don't get me wrong, but that that's a piece of history to me. You know, I could track that back and oh, well, the, the owner of the ta- or the hotel. So guys, let's well, we're getting we're getting to where we're running out of time here because we only have three hours. We've been at it two and a half hours. I was here at my desk an hour, a good hour before we even started. I need to go, I need to go walk, um, move my legs around and stuff. Uh, <laughs> I am, I I'm spent. I'm spent. I can't sit here this long. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. No worries okay. so much. Good to talk to you, bud. Yeah. yeah I enjoyed it guys. I really have. And Dean, uh, thank you. I, I know he left earlier. I, I think, I think we've wore everybody out pretty good. We've wore everybody out pretty good. So, uh, hey, thank you both for coming on. And we will always have you back on and uh, look forward to it. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, okay, cheers, Mike. Mike. Good night, nice guys. To you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Every, anytime. All right. Good night. I'll come in. Good night. Bye. Well, there you go. We wrap, we're wrapping it up so I can get up and circul- do some circulate and getting some circulation back in my legs. Uh <clears throat> Don't forget Facebook, uh, on Facebook, North of Tyne Detecting, North of the Tyne Detecting, Addicted to Bleeps, uh, Metal Detecting UK Dirt Fishing, All Metal Mode Podcast UK. On YouTube, I love watching Hunters Kimmy and Claude Opper Scott, Addicted to Bleeps, I Detect, Shilling King, Metal Detecting UK, TC Detects, um, he's using a Rudis. We talked about Rudis tonight. If you'd like to see, uh, See a little bit of the Rudis. There you go. Grim Bleepers. Uh, Aaron from, uh, uh, we've got South Coast Detecting. Aaron, it's in all the time. LP Metal Detecting. If you're looking for a new metal detector equipment, LP Metal Detecting. www.leisure-promotions.co.uk. Thank you all for listening and have a good night. The Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine acts as a hub for information, offering articles from archaeologists, detectorists and other specialists throughout the genre. Featuring many links, event info and news articles associated to archaeology and metal detecting. 
We also offer professional review services and promotion for books, resources, videos, documentaries, gadgets, equipment and much, much more. The magazine is run by the archaeological and metal detecting community for the archaeological and metal detecting community. So come visit us at archmdmag.com. That's archmdmag.com. And check out information from our media section with all the latest content, news from the Archaeology Channel, podcasts, and the YouTube channels that feature the now legendary Digger Dawn, The Man with the Hat, and Archaeo Duck, just to name a few. If you would like to offer an article, link, or inquire about other services, then pay us a visit at archmdmag.com and drop us a line. <laughs>